Okay, welcome back. We are live. Um, this is part three of Beyond the Ice Dome. Um, so we have Zarlite Tam with us. In fact, he's been here the whole time with us, just as Udark is with us the whole time. He just happens to be unavailable at the moment. So he's, he's off pondering, you know, his obligations got him down. So, but he's keeping tabs as far as where we are. And Zarlite Tam's just kind of been following the group and hasn't been speaking for the last two sessions so he's he's with where the group is because he was on the gazanti when we last saw him maybe he came back down with uh jihad and uh, uh commander what's his name commander Cisco. Cisco. yeah so actually yeah you guys could have picked him up he could have just been on there sleeping you're like oh oh you're on here still uh why don't you come I down with us we, <laughs> i knew we forgot something <laughs> so yeah they have this this a uh, little bit larger seven foot tall looking stormtrooper mechanical uh, it looks like a weird uh weird dark gray stormtrooper outfit with some led lights um and it speaks kind of robotic ish clone ish kind of like i don't know if anyone has any experience with clones but if you if you do it has kind of a recognizable voice uh, but it's a little degraded and it's uh, it's a little um, robotic sounding, and it goes by Commander Cisco. So, well, uh, Jahat went on the shuttle, um, and I think everyone else that went. I think and Guy was the only one to stay behind. The uh, uh, Commander Cisco went up and accessed your Holonet relays and was on there for a little bit just to verify that you guys are in fact Imperial. He's got it to about 90, 92% probability that you are Imperial, but all you needed was an 85% probability or higher for him to give you the benefit of the doubt. All right, uh, let's go ahead and have everyone roll their destiny, and I will see whose obligation we are on. All right, 36. 36 lands on Udark. Um, Udark is, you guys are starting to get worried now. This is like, Udark's still not with you guys. And he's like, when you message him on the comms, he's like, yeah, I'm I'm okay. I'm just, uh, I'm just not feeling well. Uh, you guys go on without me, basically. And so you guys are a little stressed because Udark's not being himself and he's not with the group because he usually likes to be with the group and hit stuff with his really big sword. So he's kind of stressing you out because you're a little, he's in the back of your mind. You're a little worried about him and making sure he's not going to actually start going berserk and start killing people he shouldn't and bring a whole bunch of heat on you guys so you got that kind of in your back of your mind and that's why you're a little stressed out yeah he needs to start showing up because we got five darks now because of that the force is definitely not with us because of this D don't yeah. worry i will be giving you light side points <laughs> yep you guys will definitely get some light side points okay did everyone roll uh destiny you need I mean, do you need me to roll again because i had I wasn't paying attention. I had a couple of couple of purples on there. Was it a destiny roll? Yeah. Um, it, it gave us two um, two white side. Yeah, I did not count it. Yeah. But no, I will give it to you. Yeah. Don't worry, I'll add the two. There you go. I manually yeah. added it, so you have two light side, and I got five dark. So not a problem. Not a problem. Look at that! I'm already helping. All right. Oh, let's... So the two Stevens do exist. Yep. Okay. So here we are. We are about to um, enter a cave. If it's easier, uh, everyone go ahead and select your character and right click copy. That way, when I put you on the map, you can paste it if you're already on this map. And then uh, Zarlek, you can just drag yep. yours over when we move to the new map. So we are on the surface of 
Bell Savis. It's like negative 50 degrees. You guys found this cave. It's too small for any vehicles. It's barely big enough for these larger um, phase one dark troopers to get through, but they're able to squeeze through. Um, anyone want to go first? You guys letting the droids go first. I just, I just want to want confirm, to you want me to, you want, where would you like me to drag my character onto this map? Oh, oh. you can Anywhere hold off. Specific? You can hold off. Uh, okay, on the I'll next map, it. we're going to go to the top upper right corner. Uh, but I was okay, just letting people you. that already have their tokens on the map, if it's easier, they can select their token and their companion. Like if they have an NPC, they can select them both and right-click copy. That way they can paste them on the next map. Gotcha. When we're about to jump in, I'm going to signal for the guys to hold back for a second. Uh, I, I, let, I let the droids go first. Okay. Uh, so they, I guess you can go ahead and put yours on this map because it sounds like they're going to have a little conversation. Yeah, I'll say I'll say y'all go ahead first. Uh, we just all need to check our gear real quick. We will secure the air, air, air area. That's a good idea. And then, so the uh, droids start walking away with their mechanical feet. Um, once they're out of earshot, I'm going to uh, tell them about the recordings I found. And, um, and pretty much everything about, about what's going on. If they want to see it for themselves, I'll let them see it. No, I was, I was yeah. So I was telling the the group pretty much. I was saying uh, once the droids are out of earshot, to where I can talk and stuff, I'm gonna tell them about. I found some droid, some recordings. If they want to see them, I can show it to them. Or uh, no, no, just tell them what you saw because you can't show them the recordings. You tried to record it, but there was this high pitched static that was peeking it out, so you can't actually hear anything. So they can see like a degraded hollow net feed of a commanding officer, possibly a captain. Uh, speaking, but you, you, you hear this noise that was barely audible to you, but if you were looking at your equipment, I said it was peaking on your equipment, so there's a lot of static, and you can't understand what he's saying, so you'll have to kind of tell them what it was, because they won't be able to actually under hear anything from the recording. Well, so since, since most of that was done in the Discord, do you want to kind of explain what the recording said? Say, yeah, let me find it real quick, and I'll go through that. Yeah, so basically, when the um, when Commando Cisco was on the Gazanti doing the hollow net, getting caught up to speed, because uh, Commander Cisco and the other Dark Troopers have been off, they've been in like a hibernation and a power, uh, some type of power thing. You're suggest you're you're suspecting is below the surface of the ice where they came from. Um, so they've been like, I guess in a hibernation mode for 15 years. And so as he's getting caught up on that, while well, most of the group were in space on the Gazanti and Guyver was accessing this, uh, mostly covered in snow, uh, relay console. It's like the tip of it. Um, usually uh, it looks like it goes down several decks below, but the over 15 years of ice and snow compacting it, you guys are up about, you know, several like 20 to 30 feet or more so but yeah so he's accessing this and he found some recordings when he uh, got through the um, security systems and they pertain to commander cisco that way it talks about them doing it pretty much a mutiny uh and stuff like that because they found that the uh human beings have a flawed and stuff And then I guess uh, uh, so yeah so and then that's like that's what it's at, I'll tell them on there um, about that. So we need to be careful around Cisco and and ask him what was he doing on the ship and everything. I guess what all what, what were they doing? Did anyone understand what he said? Yeah, I think so. I think I'm following. Well, I think so, Cisco, Cisco, Cisco well. led a 
Cisco led some led these dark troopers in a revolt against their commanding officer sometime in the past, about fifteen years back. Right, and uh, for a little more detail from from the records we got, Cisco is actually like maybe kind of possessed by a like ten thousand year old supercomputer, um, kind of off brand stormtrooper Ultron, basically. Do we even know what the record is at this time? I mean, in character. That's true. I guess most of us if probably. If someone wouldn't. wants to make a lore roll, they can. Um, it'd cool be a, it'd be a five purple lore because this is a nine uh, nine thousand years is when their empire ended. Their their yeah. infinite empires. Does anyone have any uh, lore? Uh, uh, checking. So so they're even older than the Knights of the Old Republic. I, yeah, I've oh. I've got two yellow, two green. Okay, we can I have do two a group. Ranks in the lore. We can do a great group if you want to do a skilled assist. Uh, you can have my five ranks and uh, you can have my seven intelligence to, to assist you. I'm a blue an assist. So be two okay. yellow and five brains. So plus, plus two, two yellow. yellow. Yeah. Plus five you, green. You would roll your two yellow, and you would add five additional green. So you so you'd have two yellow, five green versus five purple. Okay, five ye- or two yellow, five green, five purple. I have that right. Is that yep. correct, GM? It's five purple. Okay. Five, it's five purple difficulty. <sighs> Jesus. Uh, that doesn't come into mind, but for some reason, builders is in your head, so that's kind of what you can use that advantage for. You, you, you think that they might have something to do with an ancient race of builders, but you really builders, like, yeah. Maybe uh, hyperspace wars might come in handy, but you really, you're like, you know, I know I heard this talking about ancient, ancient, ancient history at some point in time, but um, can't quite put my finger on it. Okay. Builders, that, that sounds interesting. I'd like to know more about those people. Okay, so when you guys are ready, we can go to the next map. Is everyone online right now? Is everyone? Yes. Yeah. So how do y'all want to see it, I guess? Do y'all want to be cautious, worried, or something like that? I think absolutely. I'm always cautious. cautious. It seems like the recording is very charming and, and very convincing to the crew, so, I mean, you seem pretty helpful now. Well, the difference is, from what you said, it sounded like he was using uh, Imperial Doctrine to convince them to turn on their leaders, whereas uh, the chat kind of looks around. I don't, I don't think any of us are too caught up on Imperial Doctrine. Yeah, but don't you have troops of, that are actual stormtroopers, actually Imperials? No yeah, but they're loyal to me. Yeah, but I think the General Ron Mock thought that his troops were loyal to him too, remember? So, if, uh, if you guys want to discuss it, there is a knowledge warfare you can roll to see <laughs> if he, act, I don't know, I don't know how in-depth you want to get, but, um, you just let me know. I can give you something to roll if you're interested. My, my guys are advising caution at, at all things and kind of worried about really like what all did he get get a, a, a hold of when he was on our vessel? Did he like do any access any personal logs? Did he like try to change anything? Did anyone that was on the ship with uh, Commander Cisco have any computer skills? Um, I mean, I guess Zarlik would have been up there when that happened. Okay, did you want to try to roll computers against his, try and decipher what he might have been doing or accessing? It's up to you if you're interested. Uh, he used basically, uh, he had a cybernetic uh, on his hand that inserted into the computer, kind of like R2-D2, so... Um, there's not actually an LCD display, so someone would have actually had to get into the system to try and 
spy on what he was doing while he was doing it, so it would be an opposed computer check. What is, uh, so I guess our options are, is, is Steve Guilford any good at that? No. Okay. Droids are usually good at one thing. <laughs> okay. So yeah, I guess if, I guess Zarlik was really the only one who would have the real capability of doing so when we were there. So I don't know if Steven would have wanted to do that. Yeah. So you just let me know if you wanted your character to kind of try and spy on him without being detected, you you can roll. Uh, it's going to be a three red, two purple computer check. Wait, are you talking to me, Steve? Or we yes. need to figure that out right now. Yes. Okay. We're talking. We're talking uh, to Zarlik. All right. Okay. Yeah, I'll I'll do that. I have I have four green in computers. So what was the difficulty? Uh, three red and two purple. Thanks. Three red. This, two purple. This commander looks like it really knows its way around the computer, and it's going a lot faster than an average person. Yay! Wow. Um, uh, yay! <laughs> Ouch. <laughs> so. You were successful to see what he did, but you were noticed. You did have um, some of your slicing signature captured. So whatever tools you may have been using, uh, the way you program, uh, whenever he does any opposed rolls against you now, if you're using the same equipment and it's, and it's against you, unless you get some different equipment, he will get some boost against you. Um, okay. Okay, you see that he mainly stuck to using, uh, accessing Imperial News Network and uh, events over the last 15 years, did some searches for General Rom Morik and the Ark Hammer, um, was able to get in some... Uh, some uh, encrypted files that you would actually have to roll to unencrypt, but he accessed some encrypted files that were Imperial military uh, encryption. But he focused his searches from what you could see were mostly on General Ron Mollick, uh, the Emperor, um, the domain of the Empire, what systems uh, it had, what conflicts were currently happening, and then also information on this planet. So Do you say look I like... can try to decrypt it? You can try. Let me roll and see what the encryption would be. Okay. Mm -hmm. While y'all doing that, uh, what would be the difficulty to, to fix that that uh, hollow that that um whatever the thing the recorder I had to fix? The difficulty for repairing equipment is on the repairing area, so it costs parts depending on. Yeah, it depends on how many steps there is. There's three steps. If your if your three steps is completely destroyed, uh, I think two steps is uh, moderate damage and one step is minor. And they it was three, it was three steps. I remember so that. So it was completely destroyed. So it, it cost to repair the same as it would to buy a new one. Okay. And, the, and it, it, what kind of role is it? Was it just it's mechan it's mechanics, but you just gotta um you got it's on there. You can look it up. That's all. I'll be doing that. I'll be filling with it uh, from the parts from that droid that I collected. What what kind of uh, what is it that you're trying to repair? Uh, kind of item? My data pad. It, it did a whole Mission Impossible thing on me, but it almost blew oh, up. Okay. All right, yeah, I can't help with that. All right. Oh, I sure. Oh well, uh, too late now. Um, so one moment. I gotta go look at the charts now. Oh. Zarlik, do you have that cool? There's, I think there's one of like the cyberneticist talents that lets you, like, gives you some bonuses to shutting down other people's cybernetics or something like that. Is that a thing? Oh, that purple? I don't have that yet. Uh, the only thing I could do with other people's cybernetics are repair them, or if they are hit by an ion blast, I can power them back up. Okay, so this encryption, I'm going to go ahead and have the threat subtract from. The encryptions so it'll be five set back it'll be the same computer roll but add five set back to it for it being encrypted if, if so you were to five it looks pretty yeah it looks pretty five. 
and yeah. five step back. Yep. Jesus Christmas. <laughs> So you know it's going to yeah. be pretty hard, so you don't have to attempt it if you don't want to. But it's going to be pretty hard, and it, it might take you longer. He'll probably be away from the computer by the time you finally unencrypt it, because he's, unless you got yeah, technical I don't, aptitude. I don't think that's... Yeah, this guy's got technical aptitude, two ranks in it, so he does everything in half the time it takes a normal person to access computer systems. We could just put yeah, that's, it that's and let, uh, let him guy for take a look later. Yeah, definitely. Okay, so you guys get back on the shuttle and you guys land back on the surface. You guys are now talking. He tells you about something about a mutiny. And um, are you guys ready to go in the cave? I think so. Sure. I'm ready to go in the cave. Uh, Is it a, an easy transfer down or do we need to jump down or anything crazy like that oh that's a good point um just i will say, sorry guys yeah it's kind of <laughs> rocky if you have gear uh now would be a good time to let people know you have gear um but it's going to be a two purple athletics could also be coordination depending on how you go down can i use my exo glove to attach to a a point and then lower myself down with the cable uh what's the exo glove do uh, so let's see. Uh, as an action, I can make an average ranged light check to secure my exoglove grappling hook to an object uh, up to medium range. Then, if I need to, I can I can recoil it, like pulling something toward myself, almost like scorpion. Get over here. Um, but I want to use it sort of a different way, where I want to attach it to something at the top and then repel myself down you could probably use my uh my my uh sled. yeah you go for it you can do that I'll, I'll let you have a boost for doing that and uh if you're let's see yeah so if you want to take the time to do that i'll give you a boost and you can lower the difficulty by one uh also it is uh because of the coldness it is too setback from environmental stuff so if you got stuff to remove that you can remove the setback Cool. I'm gonna do a skill assist with D four. Um, do we have anybody that? Who, or I know we have someone here. Uh, is Ketcam probably our best ranged heavy person? PC wire, or NPC, or uh, all of the above. Just with us right now. Either. Four has got seven in 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 uh in in uh agility. Sam's bodyguard's pretty good at it too. Did you want to use the 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 thing you're setting up with your your rope and your stuff? Can other people use that? Or is that just for you? Uh, I think it's just for me because it's attached to my arm. Okay, so uh, Zarlak Zam slips and, and 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 uh, kind of rolls and tumbles down into the uh, pit or into the cave area. Uh, so he's got a couple superficial uh, scrapes on him. Uh, I'll go ahead and just take one one wound. You just got a little dirty, and you're probably wearing armor, so maybe it was like maybe not even a scratch so much as a you know bumping your head against your helmet inside your armor, something like that, something very minor. All right, so as you guys enter, this is a very dark cave. Um, if you do not have any light source, it's pitch black for you it's it's a three three setback if you don't have any type of light source or you don't have any gear that lets you see in the dark um and then depending on what your gear does uh, it subtracts setback or if you have a gear that specifically says you can see normally in darkness uh you have no darkness penalties it's about um the surface is negative 50 
In here, it's about negative 10, so there'll be a setback due to the cold factor. Um, one setback for coldness. So there's kind of your environmental um, uh, modifiers. Uh, the cave is really dark, uh, very echoey. Uh, you see a few creatures that run around, something that looks kind of like a scorpion. Uh, you see a couple of those on the ground. Okay, everyone else make it down pretty good. Uh, yeah, Senna's bodyguard went down first and then assisted her getting down. So, okay, uh, so he, he your, made it. your raptor, uh, it looks like he was not successful. So No, I, I accidentally rolled without any skill dice the first time. Oh, okay, that makes sense. Okay, never mind. Cool. All right, so yeah, so only... Uh, so only uh, um, Zarek got a little injured. I haven't seen. Did Jahad get down here? Uh, yeah. Do I need to roll something for my jetpack? And just the coordination. <laughs> it's a one purple. For a jetpack? It's easy, right? Or simple? I guess simple. Well, no, I was saying, wouldn't it be like piloting? It depends. Uh, the The attachment that goes to if it's the armor attachment, it's coordination. It specifically says coordination. If you actually have a jetpack, it's probably piloting. So I get the two. It just depends on what you have. Like there's an attachment that works like a jetpack. That's an attachment for armor, and that specifically says it uses coordination. But if you actually okay. have an actual vehicle, uh, or I guess a jetpack that says it's whatever it says. So you use okay. you use the appropriate skill for whatever device you're using says. But it would be it would be easy. It'd be based on your speed, speed one. And uh, well, someone can use the use the light to. Can if move he's the going out the cave, though, would it be would it be harder to see? Because unless he has vision. Uh, that's why I said it's going to be three black unless someone has a light source, or um, so it's three back because pitch black in here. Uh, if you're looking in the direction of the of the droids, then it reduces one, so it's two set back around the droids because they got little LED lights, but they're just bare minimum illumination, so they illuminate stuff within five, maybe ten feet in dim light. But everything else in the cave that's not around the droids would be a three three set back for vis for seeing stuff because of pure darkness, and then it's a one set back for cold. Two S. Yeah. Okay, okay, cool. So, yep, everyone's down. So, you guys get down. This is a really dark cave. Like I said, there's. Uh, if you don't see anything, you hear stuff moving around, <laughs> like tiny little creatures, some squeaks in the background, like I guess space rats. So, uh, the commander Cisco, this this area is clear of of most threats. Beware of Kinkrick. And, uh. All right. So, you guys were down here for. coming down here for a reason, right? Or are you wanting to come down here for? Uh. So, he said this had. Um, some kind of maybe access to the Imperial. Uh. The Imperial facilities. And then we also kind of knew that, like. There's maybe some, or that it was also maybe even that those facilities were actually even built into the ruins that we came out here exploring for in the first place. Oh, okay, okay. So, yep. Okay, so there, uh, the Imperial facility. Um, so he's like, I found some news on the Imperial facility while on the Gazanti. The Imperial facility looks like it was sh shut shut down um, ten years ago. Uh, but there is some other uh, non-natural uh, structures down here. If you would like to pro pro proceed, yes, lead the way. So. Uh, you guys should be able to move that light, so someone can just move the light with them, so everyone can kind of see the map. 
Alright. Okay. So is anyone having any have lack of equipment to see in the dark? No. I think I'll think I have any that we check. Yeah, I don't have anything. I think uh Raptor's got an armor mod. Let me see. Omniscan, no, that adds uh he had something else. Enhanced optic suite, so he removes two uh, setback. Okay, so this is just one setback smoke. for you then. All right, and then a couple of you guys don't have anything to see in the dark. Oh, uh, I've got a uh, thingy built into my helmet, so I have. I think it's like a optical scanner. I think is what it is. Okay, the two people that are completely in the dark. There's a little light coming from where, from where you entered. You guys can attempt to create a torch if you want using um, drive roots and finding some type of uh, flint or steel or maybe a blaster or something. You guys can let me know. Is that a mechanics or a survival? It's going to be a survival. So if, if the people that can't see, you guys can try to make, just let me know what you want to make and I'll let you know what kind of roll to make depending on what you're going to make it from. So I was just giving you some ideas, like there's probably some dry roots and stuff like that in this cave. Yeah, I'll try to, I'll try to make something. Just a, a basic torch. Okay, so here I'll find, you need to find some roots. Um, what would you do to light it? Um, I could use... Do, 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 do. So I actually have a stun cloak, and my stun cloak emits uh, an electrical charge that, to organics, deals uh, stun damage to okay. strain. So the people that don't so have any light, did you want to guide... Did, you guys can communicate. You can, I mean, you guys can't see anything, so go ahead and roleplay this out, and then if you guys want to help each other, you guys can do a group roll. All right, so as soon as we get down there, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to realize how dark it is. And using the LEDs from the um, from the the dark troopers, I'm going to start kind of looking around their feet and finding any bit of dried leaves or anything like that. Anything I can can start gathering up, and I find a, a bit of root that I break off. And I know in my med pack I have a little bit of of chemicals, and that back can be slightly um, flammable sometimes. So I soak some of that as well as a, a little piece of fabric I have there, wrap it around the, the branch. And I'm going to take my, my cloak, and I'm going to wrap my cloak around it, and I'm going to pull out the battery pack to it, and I'm going to overcharge it temporarily. And I'm going to try to get that to set off just enough spark to ignite this this bit of fabric and, and wood and, and other random collection of anything I could find that I think will burn. Okay, so the people that can see, you can see um, Zerlik going around, going almost getting his finger stomped on by the dark troopers as he's trying to grab stuff from around their legs from the little LED lights from, from their legs of, of roots on the ground. And you see him doing this for a little bit. Does anyone want to say anything? And then in Guyver, what, what are you Did doing? You lose something? Well, I thought you can't see anything in Guyver. No. <laughs> dark in here. Let me see if I have anything or if I can find something. Uh, yeah, I'll have to try to look around for something too, or maybe return back to the ship and see if I can create some simple light tool or something. Maybe from the, some of the parts of the droid. So are you telling, oh, any, are you telling any of your teammates this? What's that? Are you telling any of your teammates this? Yeah, I'll say maybe I can create a torch or something like that from the parts of the droid. I mean, yeah, let me look at this back of my bag here. Let's see. Okay. All right, so uh, I guess, what are you guys doing? Uh, I guess you guys are following the droids and stuff while Zarlex uh, is looking for stuff, and, and then Guyver says he's talk, thinking about making some type of device to allow him to see. Yeah, I'm going yeah, to be able to make a simple tool that's going to let me see. 
Um, while we're here, I'm going to, uh, Jahat's going to uh, grab his little briefcase that he's got clipped to his back, and he's going to uh, walk over and hand that to Raptor, actually, and be like, hey, buddy, um, do me a favor. Just hang on to this until, uh, in case we need it. I need my hands free. You know how it is. All right. Just... Yeah, he uh, looks at Santa, and she nods, and uh, he, he takes it from you. Oh, be careful not to press this button. This is if you press this button, it'll pop open and stuff will go everywhere. Oh, okay. Okay, Zarlek, you can do a. Um, if you go towards the entrance of the, of the cave, you can do a one purple survival. I'll say it probably took you uh, maybe 10, 10 minutes of, of looking around for stuff. Did the rest of the group kind of wander off with the uh, with the dark troopers in? as two of your members were looking around for stuff and, and going um, I want to probably keep them from going too much further ahead while they're while those who are messing with stuff okay so what, what do you do oh I'll, I'll uh, call at them to, to hold up a little bit unless they've uh... oh heck I'll ask do uh, Commander Cisco do you or either of the uh, phase ones have like floodlights or anything attached to your helmets? Uh, that is a negative. We are optimal for darkness. Should we I'm wait here there. until you are able to find more applicable provisions? Yeah, yeah give, us, give us just a moment here. Just keep this area good and secure. Oh, I suppose yeah. that's... Uh, that's probably why they call you dark troopers instead of light troopers, right? Dum bum bum. I <laughs> I uh, do I unaware qu of... clarif <laughs> clarifying question. If I'm by the entrance, do I need the three setback? Set no, that's what I was gonna say. If you were by the entrance, it would just be a purple and one setback. Just a purple. Yeah, it would just be a purple and one purple setback. Purple once. But like What's if, the one setback for? Uh, uh not having is not having a tool, I, unless you have a tool. Are you using any type of tool? I have a, me I, I have a mechanics kit. Uh, I'm thinking more like uh, like a dagger or some, t t some type of survival tool, such as an entrenching tool or uh, a dagger or something. Uh, no, that's here. I guess you can remove the setbacks with the mechanics tool because you would have fusion cutters, but it could make things a little, you know, you don't want to, I don't know. I'll just say... You won't get the bonus for having the right tool for the job, but I'll at least take off the setback, and it'll just be a one purple if you're doing it from the light of the entrance. Um, again, if anyone wants to assist, you can make it a group, but I need I haven't heard anyone ask for well, help. I, said, I was going to make some, some kind of thing to light up using the parts from, the, from that droid I have. Now, now, you know the minimum amount of time that you can make a tool would be an hour. Yeah. All right, so uh, as you're starting to look through your tools, uh, Zarlik's able to get a flame going, and he's got, like, a makeshift torch. Cool. So I'm going to grab that torch, and as I walk by that, him looking through all of his tools, I'm just going to look at him and be like, science. I just walk away, my little torch. And then I burn my fingers. Okay, so that little... Light token is yours now to control since you have the light. <laughs> okay. I think I can manage that. A simple. I'm mind making a simple tool or precision instrument. No matter what you make, it's going to take an hour. So you're going to sit there and continue to try and make a tool while everyone goes off without you. I guess I could try. Just to, stay. I said yes. I could try to make a survival tool like that. Then, seeing how simple that was for him, this one. Uh, okay, okay so light. you. You understand how a torch works. It's actually lighting up the immediate area. So you can actually see now as long as you stay kind of close to the person carrying the torch. Well, I okay. So. I thought, I don't think, I didn't know if a torch was going to give enough light for everyone, especially if like we go down different routes or something like that. And then you might want to stick with the person carrying the torch. Okay. All right. <laughs> So, yeah, I'm trying to make things work in this world as close to physics, physics as possible unless, you know, I'm overruled, such as what happens in the vacuum of Star Wars 
space versus real space. <laughs> Alright, so uh, these droids are squeezing through these tight areas. I'm going to look back at everybody and, and kind of give a general announcement of FYI, I have no idea where I'm going, so if anybody has any ideas, uh, you know, just let me know. I'm uh, I'm pretty easy about it. I think they went the other way. Yep. So as you're searching so the uh, found... <laughs> Go ahead. Uh, Commander Cisco says, "I believe the non-natural structures are over in this direction." Is there anything else down here in these caves? There are these. I think they might be Kinnerath. Uh, but they're smaller. They're not the big ones that you saw on Dantooine. These are like normal-sized Kinnerath-looking <laughs> creatures uh, that you see scurrying on the floor, so you might take heed to avoid them or avoid a nest of them. In fact, um, as I say this, this thing right here looks like a nest of them, and there's a bunch of them crawling all around. Uh, they... They kind of walk around and, and walk over or get squashed on by the dark troopers as they walk by them unaffected. Uh, but uh, anyone that's not pure droid, uh, you m may need to do a type of skill check to avoid uh, stepping on any or attracting their attention. Uh, let's see. Uh, so give me an idea. So you see, this is kind of like, if you've seen an ant bed so these are obviously larger than amps uh, these are more like a swarm of scorpions just kind of moving all around about the same size as, as a um, you know a normal size scorpion um, they're silhouette zero there's a bunch of them but they're going up and down this, this mound here can I do a xenology check to determine if I can figure out if they're poisonous, if there's something we should really worry about? Uh, yeah, go ahead. You can do a xenology. It'd probably be a one, one purple. They've got some indicators such as a stinger. Is it? Yeah, yeah. You know that they do uh, an act of poison that can cause diz dizziness. Not, not fatal, but it can cause dizziness. Can cause. Um, limbs to go numb and make things more difficult to do and or, or can i determine <laughs> if there's anything that they are adverse to like if they're skirting away from the light or if they have an aversion to you know electrical charges or anything like that yeah so they are attracted to heat um so they are starting to approach the person with the uh flame they are they are cold-blooded. Um, there's this mound right here. The reason why they made this kind of its nest is some steam is coming through. So this might be like a pocket geyser um, coming from the heated core of the earth. But they do look like they are coming towards you. Um, they do not like cold temperatures. Uh, so I'll give you is there one. is there any sizable pile? Of roots, uh, dead plant life, anything like that around? Yeah, yeah, like in, the, in the ceilings. In the ceiling, there's a bunch of um, dead roots. There's um, uh, not any nearby this area because it looks like they've been feeding on that when there's a lack of anything else to eat. Um, but over towards the entrance where you guys came, where you found uh, the parts that make your torch, you found a bunch of the twigs and, and dead vines. I'm thinking, and I'm going to ask this to the group, is it worth us building a tiny bonfire to try to lure them toward the bonfire as we walk away? Are they moving fast enough that we can't just kind of run away from them here real quick? They move about as fast as a scorpion, so they do move kind of fast. Um, you have a scout or two getting really close to you because it's they, they're putting their little claws up in the air like they're sensing where the heat's emanating from and then they're coming a little closer so they got one or two little scouts that have separated from the colony that are lifting their lifting their little claw-like hands up in the air as they pause and then they kind of move a little closer 
and then they put their hands in. so so far it's just scouts so far but uh, as as one or two move forward another one kind of follows the exact same trailway kind of like ants leaving pheromones for the others to to follow so uh you guys can make a way but um you get the sense that they're kind of like ants so once one of them finds the source of the heat it won't be long before the rest of them uh are in that area you were actually trigs along uh twigs and like sticks along the floor or something like that around there they're not around here because they like i said they've eaten that due to lack of things to eat. So all the twigs and stuff around here have been eaten and there's just dust. There's dust, there's other dead Kinnerath. Uh, well, actually, there's nothing left. They've eaten everything, bone, cartilage. Um, I mean, they're exoskeletons anyways. But yeah, the only twigs and stuff would be closer towards the entrance because they hate the cold and they don't go that far. I don't think right, how, about, how, about, right. how about we do this? How about... All organics, including me with the torch, take the lead. All droids stay behind and, and bring up the rear. When possible, they step on any of them. And if they really become an issue, then we'll cross that bridge when we get to it. How does that sound? That sounds reasonable. Or even just having like one of the dark troopers, maybe the crab droid, bring up the rear. That way we have Cisco and the other big dark trooper to uh, meet shield the front. Affirmative, Commander. Actually, your officer. Okay. What are you? What do I address you as? Um, Jahar. Captain. Captain. Uh, affirmative, Captain. Okay, so let's do that then. Go, Dark Troopers. Move your dark asses. Oh, yeah, you guys want to go in front. I want you in front to walk in front of any spears that are going to shoot out of the wall at random. I've seen Indiana Jones. I know how this works. Giant boulder roll down. Right? All right. All right, so it looks like it branches off to the left here. Can we send one dark trooper to scout ahead down this hallway? The to dark, the left? Dark trooper said there's a... 84% probability that the structures are south of our location. Can I they, ask them for them to like quickly uh, drop a map on my to see where we're going? Are you going to draw a map? Is that what you said? Yeah, I could program an app and just ask them where we're going, you know, direction stuff like what's in the area cause, so we get an idea. Uh, you can just kind of draw one based on what you've seen as you've been walking through well because they know where we're going so i don't know which way we're going and oh uh, no yeah, this get, get their i get their lay of the land from what they know they've never they uh he doesn't he hasn't says he's been here he says there might be a way to get to uh some of the underground non natural structures through this cave he's basically going on probabilities so he doesn't know any definite uh so what's what what is he so i'll ask him what, if, if, if he had any have, details, it was 15 years old. What's that? If he had any details, it's 15 years old. But land structures don't change that that eve that that quickly, though. Well, the Kinnerath nest wasn't here 15 years ago. If he was here. Okay. So, which path are we take? Which way are we going? Are we going south? Are we going which way are we going? Uh, I like 80 percent south. Yeah, there's an 82 percent probability that where we need to go is south all right so you haven't been through any of these caves before then you just uh, so what has he picked up like a signal or something that tells him they're going this way or what i i personally have not been through these caves before so this intuition you have is this based off something you're you're picking up on your scanners or what is leading us to go this way based on other caves that have been explored they have similar structures of tunnels whether this be a native creature or an excavation team they seem to have these wide tunnels that go towards non-natural formations who's moving me down the tunnel Oop. <laughs> that was me <laughs> I made it all the way down the tunnel before you said a thing. I grabbed the wrong token. 
While you guys were talking, I was trying to scout ahead. <laughs> okay. Sorry well, as you, as you scout ahead, you come across another, a bigger looking Kinnerath, um nest. Okay, then I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to call back down the hallway while y'all are playing 20 questions. Uh, another room no, down just, here. I'm talking while we're moving. It's just we're not moving. <laughs> we're just talking still. But what we're doing really is talking and moving at the same time. Trying to get an idea where we're headed and that thing. Um, Make sure we're not going into it, ending up in a trap or anything like that. So, all right. So we're over here. Uh, but yeah, there's a lot more Kinnerath on this one. This one probably is at least three times larger than the other one, so there's a lot more activity. Oh, uh, they look like anyone hostile. As you, as you walk into the room with your torch, about 20 of these creatures raise their little pointy hands up in the air as if to sense the heat. And then they All right, I'm, <laughs> I'm very small. I'm only about three feet tall. Are, so are you're these closer dark to the trooper? ground. <laughs> Yeah, are these dark troopers roughly how tall? Uh, okay, so Commander Cisco is about seven foot, and the other ones are a lot bigger. They are silhouette two, um, so they are probably about ten, nine to ten feet tall, and they take up a lot of mass. So they're definitely giants. They're about the same Can size I... as a bulk loader droid. So can I approach one of the the bigger ones and say, uh, hey, do you mind picking me up and putting me on your shoulder? The uh, the one you talk to looks at Commander Sisko. Commander Sisko, eyes kind of flash like red. Its eyes flash red as if it's passing data back and forth. And it gets down on its knees to allow you to climb on it as it has like a vibro sword attached to its arm and a shield attached to its other arm, it might be a little difficult to pick you up. <laughs> All right, so then he bet, if, so if I'm understanding correctly, he bends down and I, I can climb up and just kind of sit on a shoulder? Uh, yes. All right, then I'm gonna do that. Okay, and then you might kind of do a piggyback more than getting out of shoulder to avoid hitting your head on the stalagmites from the ceiling. That's fine. So I'll have I'll have one hand around the neck, and I'll have the other hand on the torch, trying to light the way. All right, that sounds good. And as uh, our found a, I located a door. All right, let's go ahead and get that open then. <laughs> So, who wants to do a skullduggery check or a mechanics check to open the door? I could do either. I mean, I could do the, the mechanics check. All right. There. I can do skullduggery. So, either way. Uh, so, the mechanics, the mechanics right. would be uh, a five and two setback, just because there is no obvious control panel. Uh, so you would probably have to guess and like try and open up panels. Skull Duggery, um, Skull Duggery, be a, a four purple. Okay. What um, so the, this uh, uh, what's call it this door and all that. Um, what would it be to look to see if there's anything like any security or anything set up for like traps or something mm -hmm. like that? Um, I don't know. Just, I think it's called. I guess I to set it, so I don't know what you would call what it would be to to see if it's a perception or what. Yeah, probably, yeah. probably perception. Um, is this where the torch actually is? Yeah. Uh, yeah, on the on the back of the droid. Yeah. Uh, okay. So uh, there's about thirty of these little scorpion creatures uh, approaching you guys. Uh, what do you guys? So as someone can do the perception and do the skullduggery, it's four purple for skullduggery. Mechanics, it's five and two setback. Um, and uh, you got these, I'll say they're about here. That's Did you say uh, there's like some like roots and stuff like that coming through the ceiling? Uh, there, uh, yeah, there were, but not in this area because the, Kin uh, the Kinrath uh, creatures eat everything uh, as there's 
very scarcity of anything coming through. So uh, the areas away from the away from them that have a little bit of a cold draft coming through that aren't as warm, uh, they have some vegetation, but the immediate area around their nests have absolutely nothing of that's burnable. It's all dust and dirt that they've they've eaten it literally at any so point. He- Here's my question. The person doing the skulldudgery or the mechanics check, do they have their own light source? I can. Well, I just rolled skulldudgery. Actually, I rolled streetwise and then rolled skulldudgery and then realized that they were the same. So I have one success, one advantage at it. But yes, I do have an ability to see in the dark. Okay. Okay. So if you can see in the dark, I'll, on the back of the droid, come to the corner of the room over here with the droid. So I'm safe, luring all the scorpions away. You don't need the light to get the door open, so you can work on getting the door open while I keep the scorpions. Ah, and you don't need the light anymore because you're you're piggybacking on a droid. Good plan. Also, any of the Kinrat that try and get past me while I'm kind of bottlenecking this uh, this spot right here, um, they have to make a. Uh, fear check to try and even enter engaged range with me. All right. What's the um, what's the uh, difficulty? It's three purple. Do insects experience fear? They, they will. They, they probably have self-preservation. Uh, they do with me. What is fear based on? What uh, it's going to be versus discipline. Willpower. Okay. Uh, all right, here we go. Uh, as they kind of, as a group of them go and approach you, um, three of them stop. And as they stop and the other ones are trying to get past them, um, they start to attack those two that have stopped uh, from a fear of you and decide to start eating the two that have stopped. And uh, you hear this ah, as they're cannibalizing it. Um, so what's what silhouette are these? Are these still zero or are they one? There's the, there's silhouette zero. Okay, I'm gonna they, have D four go to a nest and smash it a little bit, so they get defensive of the nest and they okay. stay away, and then lead them off uh, away. All right, so let's or them so we could not, them. or we could not disturb the hornet's nest. Let me continue to distract them, and let Ellie yeah, try to get through the door. You're you, and you'll be having the droid. Uh, they'll crawl on the droid to get to you. The droid ain't, is not going to care about them on them. Okay. So, yeah, we we're okay right now without smashing it. So, as you guys are discussing that, Kit Cam's already opened the door, and Kit Cam's gone inside. <laughs> yeah. So let's. So, so everybody, everybody through the door. I'll follow up the behind. Okay. If the door opens, is, are there are there any lights in there? Not at present. Okay. So Kit Cam leads the way. I'll take up the rear with the torch, slowly following after. And then let me know if you guys can can get the lights activated. And if so, I'll throw the torch in the cave, follow behind, and if possible, shut the door. I'm going to say we should. Can we just close the door anyways? I'm sure um, Kit Cam could. So... I guess Kit Cam like unlocked it and then pressed it open so she could or he could close it. Yeah, we we'll just close it. I'll let you keep your torch. No need to mess with it that much. Sounds good to me. When we get in here, I want to look around and see if I can, you know, find a fuse box, find anything that I can power up to try to get some lights on so I don't have to walk around with this torch. So you see some electronic equipment, but it looks like nothing you have ever seen before. It looks very alien to you. Can I make a known schematic roll? Uh, sure. So I can figure out what kind of building this is and get an idea where maybe a light switch and all this other stuff might be on it. Yep, you can use your uh, talent to do that. All right, that's a hard mechanics check. I mean, hard uh, knowledge check, my bad. Well, he's rolling that. Can you confirm if the scorpions have followed us in? Uh, or did, if the door's closed securely? Is someone shutting the door? Yeah. All right. So, 
Yeah, so uh, Kit Cam could do another skull dugger if she wants, if he wants to lock it, or um, or you, can, you guys can just, you guys can just close it if you want, or you know, it's up to you guys. They're like little scorpion things. Let's, so. yeah, let's just close it. Do you want to close it or do you want to lock it again? Let's close it in case we gotta have to get out of here in a in a hurry. You need to clear that. You need to clear the dice pool, uh, Jeff. All right, then oh, I will just sorry. turn around since I'm still standing there, and I'll just shut the door. I cleared it. Okay, then you roll. I mean, I already succeeded, but it probably took away some of my successes. Yeah. Okay. So you got your whatever your your talent does with your known schematic. So, uh, judging from your known schematic, um, you're pretty sure that just about any computer console can activate a light switch, or activate lights if there's lights that still um, survive. The ground is very, very, very dusty. Uh, your footprints are the only ones that are actually in here, and as you step, kind of the dust kind of, for the people that can see, it's about, um like an inch and a half thick it's almost like ash it's so much dust and um that as you step the dust kind of pushes away and uh it's causing if anyone does not have a syllable suit it's gonna give you a two setback from breathing in this dust and to avoid coughing and stuff like that if i start coughing i'm gonna put a breath put my breath mask on to help me breathe but yeah, it's very dusty and stuffy. It's, uh, in fact, with the doors shut and no ventilation in this area, the, the fires um, producing more smoke and the flame lights are flickering as oxygen is being sucked out of the, or there's not very much oxygen in the room. Okay, so with my notes, okay. I, I so. have a familiarity with, the, with, the, with this layout where we're at. So I would like to move to the nearest, uh, I guess, console to try to turn the lights on and stuff so we can... And one maybe, here and one here. Okay. And I'll What's go with him do? with the light to try to assist, make sure he can see what's what he's doing. Okay. And then, yeah, I want to see if I can power it back on and uh, so we can touch up that light off. Maybe even if there's been any ventilation we can run through here. All right. So this is a is not secure but it's a five purple computer check just because it's at least at a bare minimum it's nine thousand years old technology can i give him an unskilled assist yeah so you guys can assist if you have any equipment that can lower the difficulty of computer checks you can use whatever you have on you but it's it's just the five purple if you can't see you got to add the setback but you do have some light coming in right now um, All right, I'm going to get on my bag, get my CAD workstation out and set it up and uh, try to integrate with this so I can, um, yeah, do my computer check. All right, so you, uh, you're, uh, you're playing around and you're like, hmm, some of these keys look kind of familiar from the ancient Jedi temple that was about... 4,000 years old, so it looks like some of those symbols may have been derived from these symbols, and you're playing around, you click a few buttons, and you hear a uh, and you hear like some uh, generators in the background as stuff's, stuff's starting to power up. Um, the lights kind of flicker, and you start start hearing like a ventilation system coming on um, and some hot, uh, actually, actually it would be cold air. So some really cold air kind of pushes in and the, the facility is starting to feel like uh, there's this really burning smell coming out at first. Uh, in fact, it's gonna be there lingering, lingering for a while, but there's this burning, smell just kind of coming through as if the furnaces haven't been turned on in a very 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 long time in this particular facility um but the temperatures are starting to not be as cold uh the dust is blowing around but it, it seems like it's starting to get 
sucked in through some of these uh, vents down here. And uh, you're, you're just, it seems like the building's starting to come to life and, and there's uh, now power on. So I'll go ahead and turn the lighting effects off on here. I don't see many um, like things to do with the uh, Triumph that would correspond to what we're doing here with it. But I guess maybe make it easier for me to, I guess, use the system for now on, I guess, because I understand more of how it works. So, but yeah, I, uh, you I, can upgrade a your next computer check on doing anything in, with the system. If you okay, yeah. Okay, and so... Yeah, as well, the, I own this, so is that for the next system, for the one next check, or is that for the checks, future checks? The next check you do during the session for this ancient within this ancient system. Okay, well then now I use I own this system where I can get downgrade the check instead. Downgrade yeah, yeah, yeah. You, you can use it however you want. You can use the slicing chart or you can use a computer chart. So I was just- okay. gonna, Yeah, so I want to downgrade the difficulty the next check. Okay, on that system. And I'm gonna put out the torch, obviously. Okay, yeah, then it, okay, so you put out the torch, the, the smoke's kind of dissipating, so the setbacks from the coldness are starting to go away after about 15 minutes. It's starting to warm up. Um, and then the low rum of electricity is filtering throughout this, this system. Um, let me change out the... Much better. What do y'all think? I think it'll do. Somebody's going to need to grab a broom, though. I mean, I got, let me get the AC on. Let me get this ventilated out of here. I'm gonna start being nosy and walking around. I want to pull some. I want to pull the schematics and and download to my uh, my data pad so I can get an idea what this place is and what it is. Where are you getting Where schematics you get? from? Is that from your talent? Yeah, that's kind of pretty much what my talent does. It, it gives me uh, familiar with the building or a ship's design. So I guess narrative. This is how I got it was from building with that computer. Okay, so you've yeah, so you got a basic kind of layout. Um, you're kind of limited in scope as, uh, some of the areas look like they require, uh, better access or, or some type of restricted access. Okay. Yeah. Just, just an, I just a basic schematic is fine. So we know where we're going with where, where this thing is. Um, does it indicate at all what this thing is, what its purpose is, or did I just pretty much get a layout of the land and that's it? So it looks kind of from your schematics and from you actually your character actually being in a prison before, it looks like it might be a low security prison or holding or detention center. Well, it looks like this might have been a detention center at one point. Interesting. I might have to do some more looking, but that's what I can see so far. Are uh, any of the cells still marked as occupied or secured i have to do some more digging first if y'all want to go ahead and, and i'll, I'll uh, defork and assist y'all and i'll stay back the probability of anything other than a droid surviving without oxygen is extremely low but droids can survive i said anything other than a droid exactly so I'm gonna I'm walking around. I found this area that looks like it could have been a cell or uh, bunks or barracks of some sort. Um, looking around, does it look like there's um, any type of equipment, belongings, anything like that? I'm trying to determine if it was left as is and like abandoned quickly, or if they packed everything up before they left. Um, yeah. Well. You can, yeah, go ahead and look around. Um, the beds on here look very old. The sheets, though, appear to be of some plastoid material. So, uh, in fact, most of the most of the stuff on the beds appear to be a plastoid material that seems to have no signs. I mean, it's it's probably very uncomfortable and and makes a lot of cracking noise as if. A really, really old plastic <laughs> was around, but um, you see 
stuff that was not plastoid um, or that was not made of Dorasteel or Doracrete um, look like there's a small dust piles or, or different different variations of dust piles of and, and maybe some components that were of Durasteel or Duracrete mixed in with the pile. So stuff that had uh, matter that decomposed and did not have the durability of the Duracrete or the Durasteel, you find little pieces of fragments mixed in with the, the ashes of something that may have decayed a long time ago. In fact, you can kind of see outlines of stuff that may have almost fossilized within its own decay. Um, so if you're very careful, you can kind of see outlines of objects. Uh, in fact, some of them have like a biped look as if maybe there were bodies at some point in time that have been dust, but you can see kind of um, stains on the ground that kind of give off the impression of what they might have looked like, maybe a blurred version of it. Okay, so absolutely nothing organic is left. I'm not seeing any tools. I'm not seeing any gear, anything like that that's been left behind. The only things that we've encountered so far are basic structural materials and, you know, uh, this combination of dust and decay. Yes, you do see... Um sinks you see some toilets uh you see some lights over by the bed it looks like there is uh could be a force a force field that would go over here because you don't see any gates on on the bedding area there are some locker actually there's not a locker room over here um it looks like they if this was a minimum security facility they did not allow whatever was being held in here anything that lasts particularly long. Yeah. Well, then I'm just gonna keep on walking around, looking around until I either find something or somebody tells me to do something. So, so I'm just gonna walk around and be nosy. Yeah, you yeah, see well, some you... ancient computer consoles and air, this map's pretty much what you see is what you get. So you can see those yeah. ancient computer consoles and stuff like that. Hey, where did uh, where did Zarlik go? Uh, he's off, uh, wandering around, exploring a little bit. Is it safe uh, just browsing on his own in an unknown area? Eh, keep an ear out. If he starts screaming, we can go check on him. Okay. Um, well, let me go back to playing around with his computer. See if I can find out. Yeah, and I'm kind of. Uh, I'm actually going to be. Jahat's going to mostly be sitting kind of near. Uh, Commander Cisco, um, and while he's doing that, I'm actually I would like to do a my my foresee roll of the day and see if any sudden visions come to me of the next twenty four hours. Um, before you do that, what is your intention of the day? So I kind of have an idea of what kind of visions to give you. Um, kind of continuing our investigation here. Basically, kind of getting whatever use we can out of Commander Cisco um, before we either deal with him or um, try and make. I guess theoretically, we could try and and win him over to our side, but sounds like he's a little bit of a megalomaniac, and there's only room for one of those in the party. Um, Your assumption I guess, might might be flawed based on data or limited data you got from one person's perspective of correct. Correct, um, but that that is what Jahat's kind of kind okay. of going off. Okay. Roll, with. roll your, uh, roll your, your power. Yeah. This time, what I need to roll to is to find out more about the system. And nice. It's my turn. So I get five, uh, five minor glimpses about the next twenty-four hours. Okay. How about uh, can this work as paths? Because things could be depending on which way you go. Yes. Okay. Yes. So let's give you the cool paths that you might be interested in. One path leads to a vision of Cisco, some dark troopers, and a bunch of weird-looking drone-like droids. Um, uh, 
if you want to pursue that path, you get another vision maybe further out in the future of you on a, a larger ship, possibly a Star Destroyer, um, at your command. And uh, Cisco there with you with the bays opening instead of instead of having TIE fighters, you're walking along the hangar bay and you see tens of thousands of these drones that look like they can fly in atmosphere or space with these giant cannons on them. The, the drones look like they are about silhouette one in size. Um, but yeah, you see, um, you see a lot more stormtroopers that are obeying your orders, uh, and, and, uh, S Commander Sisko's there with you. Uh, another path leads to, um, a confrontation, uh, <laughs> glimpses of a confrontation on the planet. Uh, it looks as though... Uh, AT, AT ATs have landed in the snowbanks, and you, with some of the people, some of the Thorians and uh, Master Blaster and his limited mech ones, are an all-out <laughs> defense against uh, Imperial forces. Lots of snow troopers, big old explosions, battles like that. Um, another path uh, leads to. A future vision of this place looking a little more homely almost like a base with some of your people here a workshop room um, but you don't really see Cisco commander Cisco or the dark troopers in this vision um, the other the other four visions I guess they were I guess so you had one uh, that was near in the future, one that was further in the future. You had one where this it looked like there was a major battle with ATAT -AT walkers, a bunch of snow troopers with you and the the inhabitants of Dome Town trying to defend your position um, against the Imperial onslaught. You had the one that was further in the future where you're actually commander of a Star Destroyer, or or, or it looks like you're on a Star Destroyer and people are obeying your orders. Uh, and you see a huge fleet of these drones. Um, you got the so one more. Yeah, so one more. Um, then you got another one of uh, command Commander Cisco and the Dark Troopers going into an area an area of of um, this underground facility that you currently did not see on the map. And that seems to be like a closer to the future one. Okay. Hmm. So lots of paths, kind of like a, a multiverse, maybe depending on your decision, you could create multiple realities. <laughs> Duly noted. So I'll be kind of sitting there, like I said, still kind of near him. Um, just kind of mulling that over as everyone else is continu continuing their own investigations. Cisco, Cisco goes over to this console here and plugs in. Then uh, Dark Trooper 1 and Dark Trooper number 2 go to these little consoles here and they plug in and they look as if they're in powering mode. And then this droid kind of comes over here and kind of plugs into it as well uh, as if they're recharging. Okay, so you guys are not in any immediate danger. There is some Kinrath that you might want to deal with if you want to go out the same way you came. Uh, so there's that. Uh, and Guyver wanted to spend some time learning the systems, so that could take some hours. Um, what does everyone want to do? Okay, so yeah, as you're looking around, a lot of it looks the same, so I didn't, I didn't make the map bigger because a lot of it looks the same. Um, it does appear kind of uh, 
like a U shape. So it goes like this, then as you get to the end of the map, um, it kind of goes down. And as it goes down, it looks like this again. And then it looks like this and comes to a dead end um, that you don't see. So I, I didn't replicate the map a whole bunch of times because it would look very much alike. Um, so there's okay. one way. So there's one way in and out through the tunnels that we just. Yeah. And this, so there's and one this... way in and out. Yeah, that you know that you have discovered so far. There's one way in and out, and this facility looks like a U as far as you got. It. So uh, here are a mirror of here. So what you see. Um, so like you know you have your your facilities here. There's another one right here. So it's off. It's off screen. So it's it's like a mirror. Got it. So there's lots of space here. Um, so. Uh, it looks like if anyone does try out the water, it does look as though it's tapped into maybe an underground uh, well, or possibly it's just been recycling sewage. Who knows? But it does have working water somehow after all these years. Um, so is this the best computer console, or can I find other ones that might have me more information? Uh what I got to find at first. Yeah, you can spend time. These consoles are going to control different things. The lights can be turned on and the ventilation can be turned on from all of them, but it's just kind of like Imperial computers from what you're ascertaining after you spend a few hours kind of doing basic access that it appears that they control different things. Uh, one, of the, one of the computers looks like it might control the force fields inside the cells. Uh, stuff like that. So they they each of the consoles seem to have their own purpose, and there's they're purposely outside, away from the cell, so that they can um, keep anyone that you're wanting to hold in the cells away from being able to access the systems. <sighs> what would you like to do, Kitcam? Are you there? Or uh, Cena? Uh, Cena's just kind of uh, saying, uh, I'm not sure why anyone's so interested in this old dusty ruin, but uh, I suppose I'll uh, stick around in case you need help from Raptor. Oh, you know how it is. Uh, you want to get into uh, real estate's always lucrative. Besides, have you ever wanted to, like, have a really cool base. Oh, you're thinking of putting down roots. Yeah. Has anyone know. looked at these water laws on this planet? It might be worth looking into. I can I can see if I can get someone on that while we're uh, while we're dealing with this down here. Yeah, you know, I, I'm not sure where the uh, the line is between uh, grave robbing and archaeology, but. I say we're closer to the latter. Seems like there's surprisingly good infrastructure here too. Probably would have to upgrade the furniture a bit. Yeah, I think if this was a prison, the pillows aren't quite going to be uh, acceptable. Um, well, while you guys are looking around, let's keep an eye out for, uh, well, obviously anything hidden. Uh, I, I find it hard to believe that the only thing here is going to be just these prison cells. You know, there's got to be some kind of administrative hub or something like that around. Yeah, that's what I'm trying to find out. What uh, What are the limitations of this computer that I can find? Or do I go, what, what's the role for that to find out what, what its limitations are, what its functionalities are? For? It's, it's mainly going to be time. So you can pretty much, with your intelligence stuff, you're probably going to make the roles. It's just a matter of how much time you're going to devote to it. So what you're wanting to do could take days or maybe even weeks to kind of understand the language, make notes, figure out what the keys do, then break into other systems that you don't have access to. So it's all doable. It's just time consuming. So I'm trying to figure out what 
everyone else wants to do because yours is stuff that's going to take a while just depending on how much time you want to devote to it and i do uh there are other people that have obligations such as kit cam and udarks um that are in the village area um there is a mask that someone in the group's particularly interested in that master blaster has there's there is a veiled sorority that that wants to come up with a way to um to get some of these credits from master blaster and into their own coffers um from anti-entity um uh, the pirate cream proxy uh and then um Wait, there's an anti-entity too. Yeah, yeah, that's the. Uh, I I think only uh, Udark met them on the first game, but yeah. <laughs> yep, she's uh, wearing a gold pirate uh, queen mask. <laughs> she's the one that made the offer to Udark and and uh, Kit Cam about cutting them in if if uh, they come up with a way to extort some of the many credits that they assume. Uh, Master Blaster must have, seeing how his entire labor force is droids, and uh, and the Empire seems to be giving him preferential treatments and mentioning that he's a fine, tax-paying citizen, Re- or they are, regardless of them not even being human, they seem to be very protective. So that leads anti-entity and the Veltrori pirates that are actually on this planet to believe that they that he might be rolling in credits and they're willing to cut the group in if they want to come up with a way to extort him. Um, didn't we say some of the rumors were that they're, that they'd gotten the, the mask artifact from around here, maybe? Yeah. From one of the underground caves is what the, uh, rumor is story is. So this is just (laughs) one of, I mean, there was a couple crater holes that you've seen. Um, so there could be other stuff um, on the planet in other areas. Does the building have like sensors on it? I'm sure there are. That that'd be something that might take um, some time to search. And would, it some be, rules. would it be possible to have my ship over here and have my droids assist uh, you know, while everyone else is doing their thing to help uh, minimize the time? You can ask the group if you want to move your ship from its current location to this area. Well, I mean, that way they can, if they want to do something to the, for their obligation uh, and stuff like that. So, and then I can just do whatever roles, I guess, offline while they continue on. Is there a, uh, is there a hangar or landing pad or anything like that that you can find? Um, you guys did not see one, but a lot of stuff was buried on the ice and snow. Right, right, so like, if we can find a location for that, we can maybe either land near that and dig it out, or find some other way to carefully excavate it. Yeah, or, or maybe build one. <laughs> yeah, I have, I have some labor droids that can build some stuff. So that's what I'll ask the, I guess, the troopers, see if they have any idea of the layout, if, the, if there's a, a place for landing in the area. Yeah, I think Kit Cam uh, kind of bonded a little bit with the Thorians and about them being um, exploited. Um, are you still on? Or are you muted, Kit Cam? Kit Cam? No, I'm still here. Oh, okay. What would you, what would your character like to do? So it looks like what what Angiver's wanting to do is learn more about this system, and you know that can take him a while. So he'll probably be busy doing that. Um, so you guys kind of left the other place, but you guys can always go back. So just kind of, I'm just trying to get a feel what the group wants to do. And then you guys can talk about it to yourselves, decide what you want to do. And then we can continue. Um, I would say that Kim would probably kind of maybe scout out sort of the area a little bit, be a little stealthy. Um, just to be cautious, not to draw any attention to himself. But kind of just check out the rest of the uh, area in here to make sure that there's, like, nobody else here. Um, That's really about it. Okay, so that could take, what, 30 minutes maybe or an hour if you're really thorough? And 
Yeah, we can we can say that that I'm being very thorough about it, so it can take an hour to get that done. And Guyver, what did you want to do with your first hour? There's a lot of stuff you wanted to do. What did you want to spend your first hour doing? Also, I want to find out, like I said, the console I'm on, what's the capabilities of it? Uh, what, like, you know, the, what, like, what's 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 its purpose? You know, what what all can I get from it? You know, if it's if it's worth spending more time on, or to find another one of the systems that might have more information. Uh, so I want to get. The, I would probably pretty much want to get like the head hub of this area to find, you know, so I can get all the information and not spend time at little stations. It's not going to give me anything, but you know, all right, uh, it the bathroom. You know, it controls the lights. So this specific station, I'll let you do that um, in an hour, or you know, with we'll see. If you roll but another roll like you did the last time, that reduces the time by two hours per success to down to a minimum of one. So. That might take you a few hours, but depending on how good you roll, it'll be a five purple, but I'm going to give you guys a light side point. So it is one red and four purple computer check. Um, Jahat, did you want to do anything? I'm just going to round the room. Cena and Jahat, there's an hour that Kit Cam's going to be searching that, and Guyver's going to be on the computer. What do you guys want to do for an hour? Uh, I guess I'll, I'll assist in searching with... Uh... Well, Raptor will assist in searching, and I'll stay near Raptor just for protection. Okay. Uh, Zalek, what do you want to do? Um, if they're, if everybody's searching already and I got nothing else to do, I'll, I'll take a little nap. The hour, I'll just kind of relax. Okay. Um... We'll say that that superficial wound you had could probably heal <laughs> during your relaxing. And um, I think I'll spend my hour just kind of uh, over here chatting with Commander Cisco a little bit and just kind of, uh, you know, just make making small talk as much as you can between Imperial officers and trying to get a little bit of a better feel for him. All right, so go ahead and engage him then. So, Cisco, you, uh, I hear from your accent, you kind of have a little bit of that, uh, that Concordian accent. Are you perhaps one of the, uh, especially being a little bit older as you are, uh, though you do look good for your age, are you one of the old clone troopers? At one point in time, I, I was, I am now something different. I am what the Empire says is better. Interesting. So is this uh, is this cyborg thing, is that a voluntary program, or was this something that uh, you were ordered to do? I, of course, volunteered to be useful for my Empire. Uh, whatever it takes, as those clones were not made to survive long and I thought my combat could be more useful so I am one of the first that signed up for the dark trooper program interesting so do you have any I mean obviously you're uh, have increased longevity and uh, you know improved combat capabilities do you have any particular mission assigned I was here to command a regiment of, or a um, a squad of the Dark Trooper Phase Ones, as General Rom Molik, more uh, Ma, Mock, sorry, Rom Mock, um, was developing more and working on newer models. Where's uh, where's the rest of your squad? This is all that is left. Um, as we were separated 15 years ago. Are the, are the phase ones, are they cyborgs as well? Are they, they're fully droids, right? You said? Yes, they are fully droids as not very many of the clone or my brothers were able to handle the transition. Uh, some of them were not as open-minded 
to the transformation and the opportunity to serve the empire. Others had mental breakdowns where their brains were not, their brains and bodies rejected some of the more cybernetic parts. Um, Others went, I guess you would call insane um, and couldn't cope with being a droid. Some of them found it offensive being turned into the clankers that they once fought against. I and a few others see the bigger picture and see how we can still be of use to the Empire with our knowledge and experience, training the younger soldiers. Um, Do you have the last known locations of where the rest of your Phase 1s went offline or were lost? Because uh, we do have a very talented droid tech over there. That that information would be classified and need to note only. Well, I mean, obviously, but I mean, in this case, it's just so that we can get your squad back up to uh, proper fighting functionality. My mission parameters have changed since being on Valsavik. In that case, what are your new mission parameters? Some of the structures here are extremely old and have superior construction capabilities. I believe that there is technology within some of these ancient structures to provide the empire with a program far superior than the Dark Trooper program they are using to bring peace throughout the galaxy. My new mission parameters is to explore this and bring the Empire up to speed with this technology and utilize it to bring order to the galaxy. Well, that does sound uh, extremely valuable. What uh, what clues do you have? Maybe we can uh, continue to assist you uh, as we work on both of our missions here. What is your clearance authorization code? I need to know who your commanding officer you report to is so I can deem the level of intelligence you are allowed to have access to. Um, well, let's see. If you were around 15 years, 15 years ago, then I'm not sure that uh, you'd be familiar with the uh, reformation of imperial intelligence and be split into the Imperial Security Bureau, so. I have updated my memory files while on the Gazanti. I am familiar with the ISB. Oh, okay. Um, In that case, I'll give him my, well, then you should know my Imperial, you should know my clearance. Yes, but there are different levels within the ISB. Who is your commanding officer or which sec of ISB? Uh, basically, which out. which black black book budget are you on? <laughs> which which of the, of the ISB he wants to know which project your uh, your guys' payroll comes from? I feel like in character, I would probably have an answer. Out of character, I have no idea. Uh, do you have knowledge warfare you want to roll to come up with something that's plausible based on information that you had on the Gazanti and information that he accessed that? would be probable because he can't verify anything all he can do is run mathematical equations and probabilities oh you know what hmm we we encountered um what's his name Saj grieve would through encountering him and and also through what is what like programs and stuff and information was already on the uh computer would we be familiar with the imperial hands There was no data on the Gazanti, is what um, 
Steven uh, said. Um, so all the data that's on there is stuff that uh, Necro had been putting on there based on information we found. Uh, okay. and, and then information we got off other Imperial ships that we located. We've just been kind of piecing together and making it look <laughs> look imper Imperial to any outsider that comes on that doesn't spend a whole lot of time realizing that there's not a whole lot of data on the systems. Okay. In that case, what is the difficulty of uh, the Knowledge Warfare check? Um, so I'm thinking it would be a three. It would be hard. Um, you do have an Imperial Holonet on the Gazanti if you have some type of long range comm to get a hold of them and they might be able to get they might be able to get onto the Imperial Holonet and do a little search if you want. Um, of course everything on the Imperial Holonet is monitored by Imperials. Right. Um, I'll just, just right. doesn't he just need to you? verify like whatever information that he downloaded so I guess probably he just probably have to. I would like know what Necro put on there. I guess right because the guy was verifying everything based off of our uh, computer system, right? Yeah. So you gave him you gave him all the stuff you had on Steve Guilford, so that was put in there. Uh, he's he's got all the so all the stormtroopers had to create an account with login credentials to gain access to the um, Holonet limited access, and they were all warned that this is a covert operation and not to allow, not to do anything that would jeopardize our location or our mission to any of their family members. Um, and so they were warned if they do need to contact them to, to have a plausible story that could be backed up. Um, but all that information is being stored. All their private information, such as that, any of their logins, all that stuff's being stored. And then any, uh, I think we had the ship, the shuttle that docked with us, so we got the information that that shuttle might have had. It's basically, I guess, another computer. It would be a computer skill role versus a difficulty, and I can see if, if you guys happen to come across that or not. Um, well, heck, yeah, because... Uh, and Guyver's right. He, he, isn't he? Isn't Guyver right here? Well, he's, he's on a different that. system trying to figure out what his capabilities are. He's doing that for, for the... Okay, yeah, I'll... Uh... Driver still has my little code cylinder, so I'll uh, well, yeah. I'll say our, our tech has my my code cylinder over there. And what I'd like to do is um, pop over to Engiver and uh, can I get a a skilled assist from him as I'm uh, doing this knowledge warfare check? Yeah, you, you could go do it in game. Okay. Yeah. So I'll, uh, as I'm talking to to Cisco, I'll uh, mosey on over to Engiver. and say, "Well, that does remind me. I do need to make sure I get my uh, code cylinder back from our, our tech now that uh, now that he's done using it." Um, Engiver, you still got those uh, those codes for our authorization, yada yada, gibberish. Um, our our actual position, we fall under dot dot dot. Uh, so what's your what's Angiver's intelligence? Seven, right? Seven. Cool. Uh, and then I'll use. I'm actually going to go ahead and use my neural charm here to get some extra boosts on this. But if you want, if you like, if he's busy, like I said, you could probably talk to one of his droids on his ship and help him help you out because you got a three mile column, right? Uh, I have the, yes. Yeah, that's yeah, the long range. Patch in and talk to Slicer. He's got seven, he's got like six or seven. I think the, it's like uh, the, the three mile comm is very, very weak signal. It's hard to hear, um, as you guys are in a very shielded insulation. If you had a pioneer long range one, that would probably penetrate it. Or, well, I mean, because Slice, Slice has got six ranks in, in, in computers with the intelligence of seven. Well, I thought this is uh, the warfare check. Yeah, I don't know what he's talking about. Warfare, he's the oh, computers. Oh, warfare? Oh. All right, let's see how I do. Okay, so uh, you managed to remember the guy that you uh, 
fought against it is still the Gazanti from. So you got his name. Uh, you make a pretty educated guess about which division he would be in. Uh, you're trying to keep it general without giving any specifics. Um, I'll I'll go ahead and give give Cisco kind of the same story that that we've uh, we've given the stormtroopers, and I'll basically explain about how the uh, uh, technically we we fall under the uh, Imperial Hand program. So, so if you and, want, you can use those to give yourself a boost on a deception. Okay, yeah, I'll do that. Uh, how many boosts can I get out of that? Uh, you can pass one to the next player, which is yourself, then two for everyone after that. Okay, so four. Um, okay, yeah, so I'll, I'll, I'll basically give them the same same story. You know, we had this, this Imperial Hand who betrayed us, and uh, we're kind of sort of laying low right now kind of trying to continue our own missions and stuff like that but um, all right he's, he's a little bit too powerful for us to go up against directly right now politically speaking so um it's three red and i think i'll give you guys a light side point so i'll make it three red and one purple Okay, um, and I've still got the thing that, because of the all the information we collected for that specific lie, um, I can still reduce that by three, I think. Let me double check. There's uh, there is some benefit to <laughs> using the same story. <laughs> yep. Okay. So it is for it is for reduce the difficulty by four. Um, so that actually makes it simple. And he is... It would be a red, though. The difficulty would be one red. Okay. Um, and is he vulnerable to, uh, force powers? He has the ability Cyborg, which says treats it as a droid. Uh, I think it's something Darth Vader had too. Um, let's see. It's a... Okay, it's a special ability, Cyborg Hybrid. This character is considered to be a droid and follows the rules for droid adversaries. So... The, so the, would, would mind-altering force powers work on him? Uh, they might. I think that it would maybe make the difficulty more, make it different because it's at this point, <laughs> it, at this point, it's it's pretty much more machine than man. So, what what's the force power that you're wanting to that you're? Uh, I'm just the influence where I can add my force dice to deception roll. Um. Okay. How about how about uh, just because it is for it? So out of some meta, it has an AI embedded in its brain. Uh, well, let's just add three setback to it. So it'd be one red, okay. three setback, and then you can apply your force power. How many setback? And three. And if you have something that reduces setback for deception, that can be applied to it. Don't think I have spent the points on that one, so I'll just go ahead and roll it. All right, um, and I will spend, uh, I have a fourth dark side point uh, for my items, so I will spend that on more successes. I So eight successes. I too am aware of betrayal. Not everyone can see as clearly the goals of the Empire. So it's, it's one of its greatest flaws is uh, the Empire would be doing quite well if it weren't for the Empire, I always say. It is it 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 is up to individuals such as ourselves to bring clarity to those who are unwilling or in 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 incapable of seeing the vision of the empire and its goals to bring peace throughout the galaxy. I'm glad 
I'm glad you understand that. I think that's why we get along so well, Cisco. All right, so he uh, will allow you to have some information. What was it that you originally wanted? Um, I wasn't really searching for anything specific. I was just kind of like trying to basically bond with him a little bit and, and, and earn his, his confidence a little bit. So I guess it seems like he, I've done that. He has some respect for you now and sees that your visions so far are in alignment and that you're, uh, that, that you have convinced him that you are an emissary of the empire pretty much as far as its vision. Mm. Uh, so what was everybody else up to? Writing a technical manual, what does that involve? And what does it do? I'm trying to remember. It's it's in the one note, but you can make your role for your computer check that you're wanting to kind of identify what that system does. Um, I did that already. So kit cam and... Uh, who all went with you? Uh, so Kit Cam, I think, was Cena there? You were going? Was uh, Yeah, Zer Senna's, Senna's looking around, too. And Zelik, were you looking for stuff, too? I was taking a nap. Oh, okay. So, um... All right, so you guys are searching. Uh, you guys do not see anything. Um... However, if you want, go ahead and roll a um, roll a force die. You guys can roll a force die and then roll a d100. Let's see if you find anything left behind. Oh, um, let's see. I, I guess I'm going to do it. Okay. Cool. And, uh, did you want to roll, Kit Cam? Just roll a single force dice. Yes. Give me one sec. Let me pull that up. Uh, actually, how do I roll just a single force dice? On your dice pull, where you give your difficulty dice, uh, clear that out and just put a, a one. In the middle dice. It's the oh, middle. Okay. Yeah. Gotcha. Yeah. Okay, I see what it does. He just he, so I'm not writing tech mode, but I'm trying to make something make it easier so I understand it so it'll be future checks will be easier to attend to, to do. All right. So you um uh Cena, you find a pickled jar that looks like it has a Wookiee scalp in it. it well, that's weird. It could be valuable to someone that might be interested in stuff like that. It looks very old. <laughs> and the hair is braided in a specific fashion that looks kind of unique. Maybe it might give an indication as to which clan it came from. <laughs> uh, okay, and then you roll a roll 100 sided dice too, KKM. Sorry, roll a what? A 100 sided dice. Uh, on the, on the uh, tools, uh, on the f left, there's a little dice symbol uh, under the uh, snapping ruler. And then there's, uh, yeah, you find it? Okay. Okay, so you got 46. You found 200 credits. Uh, you, sound, you found something. Let's just say it's a diamond that's worth about 200 credits, so you can mark that down. You found some crystalline uh, crystal. Yeah, you found a crystal that looks like a diamond that you probably think you can get 200 credits for. Okay, sweet. I always like money. Okay. So what do you guys want to do now? Uh, one hour's passed. Did you? Did uh, Engiver make his roll? Make a scroll. Uh, yeah, I did. Look up. Okay, so two fours. So whatever you did took six hours less than what it normally takes. I say that's enough to figure out what that system does within an hour. And I have a slicing gear that allows me to get technical aptitude. Okay, so it's 
25% faster. So yeah, you could do it within an hour. Do you have an, do you have a chart, whether it be the computer or the slicing chart that you want to spin the advantages on, or did you want? Uh, so with that, like I said, I guess maybe boost my next roll because I'm trying to understand the code more. So like, I guess boost it. Okay, so you can use those for that from the computer chart. So uh, this one looks like it controls the locking and unlocking. You can actually open the door. You can set the door, uh, the main door to the entrance where the Kinnerath are outside. Uh, you can set it to open automatically when a certain weight is in front of it and close after they leave. Uh, so you got all kinds of settings within the door. This also gives you a scanner of all the life forms uh, as, as in non-droid life forms that are in the building. They kind of light up as little red blips like they look like on the screen right now. Uh, it also has a function to give alerts and pass um, information to other consoles in this area. Pass messages and stuff. Yeah, and, and, and the air conditioning and all that stuff. Okay. All right. Uh, then I want to go to uh, another computer hub that looks more centralized that might might seem like it probably might be the, go, the spot that might be the central hub of the area. Uh, so does anyone want to do anything with the story along? I know a couple of people have obligation stuff they want to look for or do. Yeah, I think the stuff that Senna wants to do is is nowhere near here. Yeah, I don't think what I and Erdak have to do either is really around here either. So you want to go ahead and maybe have the Gazanti fly over? Um, you have a shuttle and, now. You don't have to have the whole Gazanti. You can have the shuttle. That's true, yeah. So we can have the shuttle maybe take a come back over and then take us back to... Uh, uh, what should we call it? To the the dome, dome, dome town. Dome town. <laughs> okay. okay. So do y'all go? Do y'all want to go there? I'll be here if they need me. I'll tell them to 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 keep the comms open. I could I have my ship come over and it can relay the message to me. I'll go with them. Yeah, I'll take along with. Okay, so you guys can go ahead and select your tokens, right-click, say copy, and then when I move to the map, you can paste them on the map if they're not already on the map. Okay, so the shuttle comes, uh, picks up everyone but Angiver. The dark troopers look like they're still charging, so they're just going to stay behind and get a charge. Who knows what their power levels were after being in hibernation mode. All right, and then uh, shuttle comes back over to "quote unquote" Dome City. Um, before we leave, I'm gonna kind of step aside with Cisco and uh, just basically tell him, "Hey, we're gonna be if if you know we're gonna work together. I think we can both definitely help each other out a lot, but we need to like make sure we're on the same page with stuff. Uh, just please keep me posted. Let me know if you." Let me know before you do anything. That way, in case uh, it's something I can assist with or if it's something that would maybe negatively influence my mission. And of course, I'll give you the same courtesy. That sounds reasonable. What is your mission? So I can make sure that the parameters are set to not do anything that might compromise it. Right now, uh, one of our missions is to establish a... Uh, well, we're, we're clearing up an issue for a one of our Imperial contact or one, one of our uh, intelligence contacts, uh, kind of basically doing a favor for him to continue earn, uh, keeping his goodwill. Uh, we also got possibly some pirates in the area that we need to deal with, as well as some uh, artifacts that we're investigating. Okay, those seem like clear parameters that I should have no problem not interfering with. Great. Okay, off to downtown. I just wanted to make sure that he wasn't going to blow anything up while we're gone. 
Yes, he will not order an attack on Dome City. <laughs> All right, so the shuttle lands. You're back in Dome City. And I take it they relayed the message to have my shuttle, my ship meet me there. Uh, did you let the group know that you wanted to do that? And is yeah, anyone... I, I, told them, I told them, and they they could they didn't have to wait for the shuttle. They could actually take my my craft back to to my ship. Okay. Mm, I kind of like the idea of arriving in our little imperial shuttle. I feel like it. Seems uh... the story. Okay. Could y'all pass that message to my ship to bring the droids? Yes. Thank you. All right. If you need any like labor droids to help out with anything, you I can leave them behind for y'all. Okay, so you're gonna fly your civilian ship and land it somewhere on the surface. Okay. Yes. All right. Cool. And that way the droids can come off and help me scout this area and you know uh, I guess round up everything we can find. Okay. And is everyone in the group good with that? Sounds good to me. Okay. Cool. And Ar I guess Ardak's still aboard, or did where's Ard Ardak at? It doesn't matter. His his character is somewhere. Uh, he will tell us where his character was when he returns. Okay. All right, so your ship takes off. The Imperial shuttle lands, drops the rest of the people off, and you guys are in Dome City. Uh, there's an AT, ACT uh, still looks like it's clearing off rubble, rocks, and placing devices along the end. Might have something to do with... Uh, the construction of the dome. Uh, Master Blaster, as you land, greets you. Ah! Uh, hold on. I, I got two screens. Uh, so he comes along in his little, or they come along because it's, it's a, I just, they're an entity. Um. Ah! That's a fine shuttle you got there. I I like that. What one thing I there is to say is that the Empire has impeccable style. Definitely agree. You know, there's it's always important to make an entrance. Yes, yes, it is. So I take it you are enjoying yourselves. In Dome City. Well, of course, there's a reason we keep coming back. Ah, oh, I appreciate it. Well, continue to enjoy yourselves. Uh, I will continue with this dome. Hey, AK7365, put that to the left, not the right. Ah, oh, if you want something done, you gotta go order a different droid to do it yourself. <laughs> And he walks away. <laughs> or his walker takes them away. To go back to yelling at other droids with the construction. So, out of character to the rest of the party, are we... Um, so I guess Zarlik wasn't here for all the discussion last uh, last session, but um, basically we kind of have, have the three groups here. We have the, um, the Empire, who is working kind of pretty closely with Master Blaster, has a good relationship with him. There's these pirates, and then there's the Athorians. Um, we're wanting to help the Athorians deal with their uh, pirate problem. They're being extorted by some pirates, including the Veiled Sorority, or is it primary, or is it just the Veiled Sorority? The only pirates that you have come across, or anyone in your team's come across, is the Veiled Sorority. So you know they have a presence on here. You're not sure if there's any other pirate groups, because they're not as obvious if there are any out here, because... Got it. Okay. They, they do have a single Imperial ship trying to prevent pirates come, from coming here, so they question any ships trying to enter or leave, and they monitor all ships' activity, if, where, which crater they're flying into, and, and if they're flying onto the surface, and they're tracking for possible pirates trying to set up a hideout somewhere. So, Can we ping them for uh, like that information? Can we try and get, get a list of... like? Oh heck, I don't even know how, like roughly even how many that would be, but it, it, it can get the information on, uh, like where ships are landing and stuff like that. If that would help us maybe narrow down some of the pirate hideouts. Okay, so yeah, you can you can call them and ask. Uh, your shuttle has a shuttle ranged, um, uh, uh, 
uh, relay. Right. Uh, are you guys wanting to deal with that now, or you guys have other stuff you want to do here in the dome? I think my priority, character-wise, would probably be the Athorians. I'd want to help them most, so yeah. Um, because one plan we did discuss was basically trying to bait the um, the pirates into attacking Dome City and then having both ourselves and the Imperials maybe come in and help in the defense to eliminate them. Um, Are there a lot of civilians in the city? Uh, I think so, yeah. This particular town probably has about 50,000. Uh, there's a mix. There's actually a native species in this area that are very primitive. Um, they are look like orcs with hunchbacks, and they have kind of primitive tools. They get, along with the Athorians, as the Athorians uh, respect their home and have helped to make, uh, bring order from chaos of cultivating the different plants and importing some of their own living sentient trees from Ilthor to this particular planet. So they kind of, they, they appreciate the druidic of these, of this particular herd of Athorians. So, and then you got some humans, you got some Imperials that kind of come here. You got a mix of different species of it, but the vast majority is the native species and the Athorian herd in this particular I'd like, town. I'd like to mitigate as much collateral damage as possible, so I would vote. I'm, I'm all for luring them into your trap, but I would say drawing them into a city is just asking for trouble. Right, and we'd, we'd try and, and, and minimize that, you know, by obviously warning. Because um, I think Master Blaster has some decent number of, like, droid security, right? Oh yeah, Master Blaster's entire construction crew is um, droids, and he even has several of the old clone B1 battle droids holding what looks like um, a vehicle weapon, the uh, mini MX VV mini uh, missile tubes. Um, right. So, so what are the pirates after? Money. Okay. Right now they're extorting uh, the Athorians, but they, the Athorians, are barely making a profit to be able to survive here. So they don't have the money to sign a contract with. What's his name? Start with the hey, H. Harley. Hamar. Hamar. So Hamar wants a contract, and that would free up obligation from two of the players. Yeah. And so, so, so how are our... the Athorians? How are the Athorians making the money? They own the vineyard. The vineyard is. Um, let's see. Okay, so they the Athorians are making money through the wine, and the pirates are what taxing the Athorians? Protection, yes, no. extorting protection. <laughs> okay, all right. So, what if we drew them to one of the vineyards, an underproducing or a smaller vineyard, telling them that there's a by leaking information somehow that there's an Athorian uprising? So they're going to want to squash that. So that way we lure them to a place where we can set traps. It's a neutral area away from civilians. We can control the territory. We can control the area. And we lure them there as opposed to a city where there's more variables, there's more innocence. So that the, would be my vote. One of the other things that uh, we did have going on was that the leader of the Veiled Sorority group here tried to convince uh, Ketcam and one of the others. I think it was Udark. Maven Erdak. Yeah, Ur yeah, Erdak did a mission with them. Yeah, tried to convince those two to help them take Master Blaster down. Um, because Master Blaster is probably presumably quite wealthy and the belt sorority wants his money and w when they say take him down they meant do a shakedown to find some some uh some way of extorting him to get him to pay them so that not all of his credits are going to the empire and him okay and so pi pockets. so pirates are bad and master blaster is bad mm -hmm. master, master blaster was actually hired by the authorian company belt frail corporation that they're basically hiring him to build a dome to protect the vineyards so that, as you notice, the, the surface of the planet's 50 below. It's always snowing. 
snow piles up really greatly and there's flash flooding that happens that will wipe out their entire vineyards and that's what they're trying to avoid. They're trying to establish a foothold in this particular crater by building a dome to protect their vineyard and the dome will probably take about a year to finish the master blaster out. are neutral they're not they're, they're not really enemies and they're actually kind of friendly to us um the only reason we would actually want to potentially harm them is because uh jihad wants the mask that blaster has but that's a purely selfish one and we have some maybe alternatives to ways to to obtain that mask okay so that's just that's an npc who wants swag as opposed to progressing the story yeah he's he's uh he's right. all of his money's legitimate okay. and uh since his entire work crew's droids there's no overhead all right well my my vote would be lower lower the pirates into a trap outside the city i'm down for that i think that'll be a good idea So, do we have a way to leak information to the pirates? Um, we could probably have either Erdak or Cat Cam um, kind of go to them, even, and heck, potentially even kind of pretend to join in on the attack to lend it some legitimacy. And just obviously, you know, get out of the way as, as soon as safely possible. Okay, so Ket Cam goes to the pirates and says under a flag of allegiance, hey, there's a bunch of Ithorians, they're, they've had enough of your shit, they're over here, I'm willing to help you go do it, but maybe not necessarily for free, that way there's no suspicion. Um, let's go squash them, you pay me as a mercenary, I'll help out. Um... And in the meantime, the rest of us set up a trap for however they get there. I don't know if they're in a ship. I don't know if they're if it's all land based, but we can set up traps and fortifications when they come for the Athorians, and we actually close the trap. Set the trap. Right. Set the I I am down for being bait. That is totally fine. Okay, so how do we make that play out? Um, it might be. Is does Ketkem have any? I know Ketkem's got like decent presence. Does he have uh any any deception? Um, yes. Or wait, pretty deception much, is is cunning. It's cunning. Yeah, pretty much. Basically, his top sort of things is being sneaky and yeah, kind of deceiving. Okay. Um, so Cat Cam's probably got it. I don't know. Kind of, kind of up to you, Cat Cam. You can go by yourself, or uh, Jahat is in Mandalorian armor, so would 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 not stand out as a partner going with you. Because um, the other two things we want to do is we want to alert Master Blaster, and and so that he's prepared to help plan. Um, and then we can also we do have the option of maybe calling that Imperial ship down from orbit. Getting their assistance. How? Where are the pirates? Are they? Do they have a a land based base? Do they operate out of a ship, a series of ships? What's that look like? No one's got that intel. Okay. Not even the authorians. So maybe we can. No one's asked them. <laughs> Maybe right, maybe we can have. Why don't we do that? Yeah. Okay. Well, I can go talk to the Athorians and find that out because I kind of have a rapport built with them already, so they trust me. Um, so it'd probably be easier for me to get information out of them than it would be for anybody else. All right, get as much as you can about. You know, if if the if the pirates are extorting them, they have to be making contact somehow. So if you can figure that out, figure out numbers, figure out what they've seen as much as you can. Okay, I can do that. I will 
I will, uh, whenever we are ready, I will go back to the Athorian camps and attempt to make contact with somebody there and try to talk my way uh, to getting the information. Doing my whole, like, Italian talking with my hands, making symbols, <laughs> making symbols and whatnot, just probably making nonsense, but trying. And if you can also find out if they have a place where we could set the trap, maybe outside the dome. Okay. All right. I will try to find that out as well. Did we lose our GM? I'm back. He did. He went AFK for a second. I am back. What's up? Okay, so here's what we're doing. I'm going to go back to the Athorians, back to their camps, and I'm going to do my whole trying to talk to them thing like I did the first time in the fields. But this time, I'm going to try to find out information about, um, like, how they contact uh, these pirate imperial folks, um, like what type of contact it is that they have with them, how do they contact them, um, figure out if there is a space where we can plant this kind of like ambush of these pirate imperial guys. All right, so some of you guys will have to go talk to them, I guess. And get some intel. Yeah, I'm going to. I'm going to go talk to them since I already have the rapport with them. That's what what I'm going to do. But I'm just saying that's what I want to do while I'm, or what I want to find out from okay. them while I'm doing while I'm down there. All right, sounds good. All right, so uh, is it, who's all going with you? I prefer just to go alone. Okay. Did someone want to? talk to Athorians too, or was that just what you guys were discussing? That is what I am going to do right now. Oh, um, oh you're talking to the Thorian. Okay, that, got it, got it. Okay. All right, so you can go down to the area where the Thorians are. A lot of them are manning the, um, the vineyards. Okay. Um, I will make an attempt to kind of locate the one that I was talking to once before. Uh, maybe if I see some of the kids that I was interacting with before, I will go make my OK symbol and kind of see if they'll point me in the direction of the, the gentleman that I was talking to before. Ooh. Okay, so you spend a little while and one of them gives you the symbol and you recognize recognize them. And they go, <laughs> Okay. Uh, yeah, then I will go over and I will ask them if they know where the big tall guy, like I'll kind of start like making hand motions of like what the guy that I was talking to looks like. So like, I don't know if they have nose, like long noses or like whatever, but whatever their like facial features, anything that I can kind of like do so some sort of symbol with my hands or something like, like that. Do you have xenology? I have a little bit, not a whole lot. All right, so just do uh, one purple xenology. You get your boost for interacting with them. But I guess you can ask this person right here, this authorian right here. You know, just do your xenology to try and to get a, you know, try to relay what you want using the bi language and what you've observed, how they communicate, or, or even try to imitate some of the noises. All right, so... Uh, you start doing hand gestures and you start going oh, he, oh, he. and uh, uh, one of them looks at you with its eyes and the eyes widen and oh, I, he, oh, he. and the uh, another authorian looks at them and go oh, oh I, he. and you get the impersonation that they're trying to correct your grammar a little bit but then they point uh, further south to where the person that you're looking for is. 
Okay. I will I will kind of mimic them at what they're saying. And then after that, I'll kind of give them like my thumbs up, which is the, the infamous symbol. Oh. Hmm. And uh, see if they give me a thumbs up back or not. Yeah, they give you a thumbs up going, <laughs> I will tell them thank you and I will move on down the road to the next guy and do the same thing again. Just kind of start using what little bit of knowledge that I do have as far as their vocabulary goes and hand gestures to convey the point that I want to try to figure out how it is that they communicate with these pirates to get their their protection quote unquote and like how they do it and like if there's set parameters times like things like that that they do and then also ask them if there is a way that we can potentially maybe just outside of their region in within the dome area here uh, somewhere just outside of that where we can set up some traps and use that outside area as sort of a battlefield. Uh, so uh, they start pointing you around and eventually uh, you've, you're directed to this person who's over by one of the weak reeks feeding it and brushing, I guess petting it because it has no hair. So this uh, guy this... down here is petting the reek. As it's grazing on the grass. Okay. Uh, and this then one's I... wearing fancier clothes than the other ones. Okay. Then I will walk up to him and I will start talking and asking those questions. All right. So you can go ahead and do it. Okay. So I'm going to kind of walk up to him, hand gesture, and be like, hey, can I, like, how do you talk to... Uh, the the pirates. How do you schedule your meets? And then ask them is if there's a way that we can use outside area from the dome to kind of set some traps to spring for some bad people. So the uh, the Anthorian um, looks at you and. It has a uh, a scepter looking uh, rod, but it looks like it has a little technology on it. And uh, as you're speaking, you can. It looks like it might have an earpiece, and it's it's uh, sounding, making it as you're talking. It sounds like it's translating it into its ear. Uh, and the Thorian, uh, as you said, a mouthful. And Thorian is like. And a robotic voice goes, They heard refers to me as Screw Loose. You speak really fast. <laughs> so uh, it's it's little rod kind of working as a droid type translator. Do you want to move your miniature down here? Or do you see where? Do you see where? Okay, in that case, then I'll repeat what I said, and I'll say it more slowly, so in that way the computer can keep up with me. I, so it's talking, and then you hear the droid in the background, and I appreciate you accommodating my technological uh, nuances. Um, so I'm going to move your character down here. All right, so your character's down there. So, um, the uh, so as the Thorian is speaking, the Thorian, uh, um, she's uh, the Bell Sorority and other pirates come to me to collect the protection payments. Every 15th day of the calendar, or when the three suns have half alignment. I don't know how many suns there are, but (laughs) 
whatever the, uh, I don't know if there's actually three suns, but whenever the, uh, basically telling you every 15 days they uh, approach. Okay. Um, I will ask them when is their next scheduled stop? Like how many days have passed? The next payment is scheduled in seven days. Are you here to help? We have heard much about an outsider like you who refers to this gesture. And as, as it's saying that, she gives you the thumbs up. <laughs> yes. And I will respond with a thumbs up. <laughs> I am curious as to why you choose to help us. We do not know you. Do we owe you credits for this? No, no, you, no, you do not. Um, I am, I am doing this as a means, um, uh, for one to show to show your your people respect because I feel like um, because you are not heavy with the technology that a lot of people may look down on you so. I uh, I want to kind of change that perspective a little bit, um, but I would be completely lying if I said that was my only objective. Uh, I'm also trying to um, alleviate a little bit of heat that I have on me. Um, so by doing what I need to do here, um, I'm also going to be alleviating some danger to myself. Uh, if you will about that, um, but mainly I have I have come here and I have spent some time with your people and have really come to like the culture and and your people and so I I do want to see you guys grow and advance on your own and not have to rely on others for protection per se like these pirates because i do feel like they are kind of using you um as easy targets and i don't think that that's quite right that is very noble of you we appreciate your sympathy and welcome your help <laughs> perfect so my my friends and I will be putting together something. Um, I feel that the less that you know would probably be more beneficial to you. Um, so I don't want to really give you any information other than we have a plan. Um, and the plan is going to consist us of having sort of an isolated area um in order to carry it out so uh that's why i was asking about the outside area kind of just outside of the dome region um to kind of use as a a potential i guess battlefield if that's what you will call it hopefully it won't come down to that but in case if it does uh i just want to try to minimize civilian life damage i definitely don't want to do any sort of damage to um you know your crops or anything like that um i want to continue making sure that you guys are, are thriving and um moving forward in your in your winemaking process so um that's my main concern but i just wanted to get permission from uh you guys before we did anything um, <laughs> she said this, that would be perfect. We appreciate it. There is no one from our herd or the natives that are on the surface as it is too cold. That would be the optimal place for you to take care of it. Again, we are in your debt. Thank you so much. <laughs> Oh, no, 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 no debt is needed. Um, this is just, like I said, to 
simply level the playing field. I, I don't want you to feel that you owe me or my friends anything. Uh, you absolutely do not. Then we will consider you our friend. That is perfect. Um, I, I as well. Um, and at that point, I will excuse myself and tell him that I need to get back to my friends. Um, but I appreciate everything that he has, all the information that he has given me. I'll give him my classic thumbs up again, and I'll turn around and walk off. Um, the, um, the, everybody. the Thorian looks female uh, and, and has a female sound to it. So. Oh, okay. I apologize. <laughs> It's okay. That was with me. <laughs> um, well, then I will tell her, thank you so much for the information and give a thumbs up and walk away. Thank you, friend, as she holds a thumbs up and all the authorians within earshot and eyesight ready, stop what they're doing, look at you, and put their thumbs up. Perfect. I will. 360 thumbs up. <laughs> all right. And that's how you start a cult. <laughs> right. All right. So I will return back to everybody and give them the news of um, them allowing us usage of the outside area from the domes. So outside of game, do we have enough information to determine... Because he just said, or she just said, outside of the domes would be ideal um, on the surface. So do we have at least enough information to, to, to have a location on where we can set the trap that we know that they're going to come? If you guys want to spend a light side, I can give you some pointers or hints or something. We also could just have... If we want. We could have Chet Cam go on her little, or his little venture over to... Veil sorority and then send us that info so like where their base is where they're going to attack from and stuff like that i could do that as well yes and while he's doing that we can go maybe have i guess probably senna's probably the best to go talk to master and blaster um to to maybe try and convince them to assist us okay so once, we'll, once we know that the attack is happening, I should say. Okay, so the yeah, next step is, is just, to go to the pirates. Sorry. Just so, uh, we're, just so we're clear, I just wanted to make sure that when I come back, I literally just repeat everything that was said to me. So, like, everybody who is around whenever I'm telling this story, whoever that might be, is going to have that knowledge of like, this is what time they come, this is how long we have, like, all that good stuff. Sounds good. So maybe we tell the Veiled Sorority that you got rumors that the Athorians are not planning on paying this time, and a couple of them have, like, two entire blaster pistols between the 50 of them. What are, you, what are you trying we to say? Want, I was saying we want them to come. We want the, the Veiled Sorority to come in force to try and squash this, but we don't want them to be actually expecting a real fight. With that error we just discovered, we could, y'all could set that up and uh, build shops and stuff for like that. Should we say maybe that uh, the Athorians hired like a couple of mercenaries or something? No, because we okay. want them. We want them expecting as little as possible. We want them to go. All right, this is gonna be a cakewalk. Let's send the B squad. You know, this will be easy. Yes, and I always, and I also assured the leader of, or what I'm assuming is the leader um, of the Athorians that we would keep them out of the loop and keep them as safe as possible. Yeah. So, but don't we want to deal a heavy blow to the uh, pirates? Do we just want to take out their B squad? Does that accomplish anything? 
so maybe what we could do is have when when Ket Cam goes there, sh he can convince them like, hey, it's not going to be any like serious resistance, but you want to make a good show of force. You want to make you, you don't want to have to deal with this again, right, guys? So send everything, make a big show of it, stop the resistance with overwhelming force. So they all show up, we kick all of their asses, and then go back and kill like the two that left on guard at their base or whatever. As you guys are speaking, one of those annoying reporter drones seem to have caught in your whiff, and they're they're like it's kind of zooming in. <laughs> and uh, Charles sees you guys talking. Ah, hello, how is my star for the uh, my story coming along? Any any progress? Any drama for me to take some notes on? Charles is this gand over here. It's for Cena. <laughs> we probably get a good like a good shot of the dramatic war council thing going on there, and just make make sure I'm out of it. But get everybody to pose dramatically around the boxes and look serious like we're talking. I love it. Continue. Just pretend I am not even here, and neither are the drones. Just acting natural. And you, Cena, I'm sure you've got an eye for editing. And the, the gang kind of walks off. <laughs> hey, while they're talking and stuff, so I can still be on the comms with them, uh, when my ship arrives, I want it to, to be a temporary relay station, relay. And then, well, I have droids build, like, a more permanent relay. Uh... That way you can go straight, like, a, kind of pretty much a, system, a signal booster is what I want to do. Okay. So that way I'll be in communication with them. <laughs> if they want to talk. You can also leave the building, uh, leave the facility just enough to where you can, the facility's just dampening your communications. If you're outside of the facility or have the doors open at the facility, your comm can get through and you can talk to your group. Yeah, I'll say it I'll say it like to say I just like temporarily set up a, a, a patch through my through my systems uh thing so that it relates to my ship and then my ship relays it to the group. Okay. Bye. Sounds good. We'll kinda of catch him up on what's going on. Yeah, you guys can talk to him. So you guys got a plan? It seems like our next step is Cat Cam going alone or with someone to the Bale Sorority Camp. Uh, I can try to go alone. That would be all right. Well, I think if we send somebody, if we send a fighter with you, that way, you know, let's say they they land in some type of craft, we've got two fighters that can be positioned within them or behind them to. You know, get up a crossfire set up or, you know, yeah. set a bomb set on a bomb ship, on. something yeah. like that. I can take my sentry droid with me. I like the sound of that. Sounds good to me. And then the rest of us would have to head to... Well, somebody would have to talk to Master Blaster to try to get their help. And then... We would also have to have some mechanics or something like that to start setting traps and uh, ambush points at the, the physical location. Perhaps set with skull and duggery. But building the trap itself, yeah, it could be mechanics. Skull well, for I, natural traps. Survive. Yeah, I, I mean. Well, I know, I know there's a lot of... Um, Mechanics stuff about, you know, you can actually build fortifications, you can build yeah, pillboxes, you can build lines, no yeah, stuff like that. That's what I was thinking. Where do you want to do that at? Did you want to do it at this place we found or something else? I, I want to do it wherever we think they're going to come and try to squash this. I think maybe we're, we're setting the trap. We have maybe like we can even like set like some traps and stuff go off like maybe some pheromone traps to where the kinrath will attack them and stuff, 
and so it's so like so dwindling their numbers or at least distract them and we can fortify this location. That's true. Yeah, yeah. That sounds good. But like I said, if they go through, the, if like you know, put false things, and if they like, kind of like, kind of like, like the whole Home Alone thing, where he made it really, he, he wore them down before they got to him. Yeah, let's let's get some cans of paint on ropes and uh, as many micro machines as we can find. And don't forget the speakers and, and with the machine gun sound. <laughs> right. Right. But yeah, I'll think maybe like we need to set some pheromone traps. Uh, maybe a good uh, xenology roll, a doctor roll, something like that. Uh, and that way, when they hit them, they're then they can run or attack them. Okay. Yeah, I can do that. Force the bunker and stuff like that, and everything, and probably do some retrofitting. I was reading about some retrofitting we could do. Probably put some weapons on there. So that goes back to my original question after she got back from the Athorians. Do we have a specific location? That we can do this. We probably where we're at. Maybe uh, we can get the dark troops to help us. We no, right now we don't know what direction they're going to attack from. So that's where we need to get camp to go and, and figure that out and then relay that to us. So at least, at least, okay, at least so some then, evidence of where we might be. Like, like she accidentally dropped out of pocket or something slipped, maybe. Yeah, no, like she, she should say, she should be able to say. Hey, I heard the Athorians are rising up. I know you have a, a payment coming up in fifteen days. That's I hear they're going to ambush you at the at the payment. It's going to be over here, or you know something like that. Like she needs to give them information. That way, we have time. So, do you guys want to speak to Master Blaster first and see if that alters anything? And yeah, then then, then have Kit Cam. All right, so someone or whoever wants to go have your conversation with Master Blaster. Who has a relationship with Master Blaster? Yeah, I gotta go that. So Send we're gonna try to... over with Raptor. Yeah, like that. Scrub harder. Ah, I need that polished. You gotta clean that off. The Imperials like their stuff brought back better than it was given. Well, maybe they don't, but I do. So get back to it, X7326. <laughs> so, uh, he's over there giving orders. Roger, Roger. Master, uh, it's good to see you again. I had some, uh, some matters to discuss. Yeah, yes. Uh, hopefully profitable matters, huh? Hopefully. Uh, I, I suppose getting rid of trouble is is a good way to improve profits. Uh, well, I don't know. Maybe. Sometimes it's good to have a little trouble to keep the eye on one hand, while the other hand is doing something... profitable. Yes, but sometimes the uh, the trouble that you let let grow becomes uh, a little bit too uh, a little bit too bold in their move the movements. Um, yeah, these riddles you speak they they confuse me and they definitely confuse Blaster. Uh, why don't you just speak plainly and tell me what's on your mind? Well, um, there's a I don't know if you've noticed. I I know you have so many other things to worry about but there seems to be a bit of a uh, bit of a problem with pirates hey uh, you talking about them sorority punks yes are you uh, are you aware of their operations i'm just aware they're a bunch of punks that, that trying to extort me for protection money i told them to get the hell out before i blow one of their heads off with a missile tube <laughs> Well, they're working against my business interests as well, and I would—I uh, was wondering if I could get your approval on a plan I'm working on to uh, to deter them from from any any future activity in this region. What's your plan? I want to lure them outside of the city uh, to a location that we'll prepare ahead of time, uh, outside of the jurisdiction of 
whatever powers that be and uh, away from any civilian casualties and uh, set an ambush for them. Uh, they, they've they approached some members of my crew and asked if we would take part in a plan to extort you. And uh, ah! we, de we decided that, you know, since we have such a good relationship with you, we'd, we would rather uh, help you out and help ourselves by getting rid of these uh, leeches. You know, those little, uh, those little rats seem to, um, really cause a bunch of enemies. <laughs> oh, you know, uh, these, uh, these, uh, what do you call it, the, the pirates or whatever? I think they're so much smarter than Master Blaster. You know, I might have some explosives I could sell, and, you know, these, uh, these uh, sorority punks, they, they seem to think I have a vault hidden somewhere around where uh, I'm able to put some profits and, uh, and gemstones we come across. Maybe I can sell some explosives to your fine group and uh, give you, and uh, maybe have some false information about a secret vault um, fall down somewhere. That could be helpful. Uh, if we could leak that information, that might uh, make make our ambush site even more attractive to them. Oh, well, consider it done. Uh, just, uh, you know, I got some extra explosive material that uh, we didn't quite use up on setting up the uh, the perimeter for this crater. Maybe, uh, maybe it could go missing, uh, you know, and I end up finding some credits in place of the explosives I thought I purchased. Well, I, I would, uh, I would assume, given a man of your reputation, that these would be, um, worth the, worth the credits. Of course they are, and guess what? Just between you and me, there are, uh, they're not restricted, cause uh, you came with them. Wink, oh. wink, nudge, <laughs> nudge. <laughs> of course, yes. I, I I like this plan, and I think uh, I think we could not only help you unload some overages, but uh, supply you with some credits to uh, to you know to as a service, as as uh, as conscientious traders. Oh yeah. So uh, how about how about we mark up the price? 15 instead of my usual 25%. And then you can just basically purchase uh, restricted uh, explosive materials for making whatever de explosive devices you guys want to craft and not have to worry about doing a street rise hole. Nice. So I'll, uh, if, if he has nothing else for me, I'll... Uh... I'll go back and inform them how the uh, the conversation with Master Blaster went. Oh yes, and uh, I'll make sure one of my my useless droids that's uh, fallen apart and I don't feel like repairing will have the details as to where my hidden vault is and make sure he gets one gets lost uh, around some of the bars the uh, those punks frequent. <laughs> and I'll uh, I, I'm assuming uh, to the rest of you guys where we want to leak the load. We want to leak the location of the vault as the ambush site, or do we want to? Yeah, just let me know where you want it, and I'll uh, I'll make sure uh, uh, one of those dumb dumb asteroids uh, <laughs> has that information on hand, if you know what I mean. You could even do yeah, both. Yeah, I think I think that's money. Okay. Um. So one one thing what I was thinking. So I was thinking we could even maybe do both. It's like, you know, convince them to send maybe half their forces to go bust into this vault and then the other half to come deal with the Athorians. That's a good idea. Split them up. Guarantee we get more of them. Can always uh, cause a lot more damage that way. So I, I like mm -hmm. it. And then we can maybe deal with the ambush at the... the Ithorian with the Ithorians, and then go to the vault and clean up whoever didn't die in the collapse. Right. I like it. The only question is, is there any way that we can maybe try and bring... Uh, there, no, yeah, no, never mind. So, um, some of this might require some planning offline. 
uh, on the Discord. So you guys can do that under, um, let's see, I have a spot, planning a heist. There's a planning a heist under story where you guys can kind of come up with ideas and vote or whatever what you guys want to do. Um, if you do want to do two different locations, but in order to drag, combat can drag out a lot if the PCs are split. <laughs> so maybe we could have NPCs that are not being controlled, but they just maybe do a mass combat role or something to determine the results of what droids got lost uh, versus the Athorians. Then we can focus on the players that are on their main battle if you wanted to do something like that. But we can we could talk about that kind of stuff uh, on Discord. Um, yeah. Also, you guys can make any purchases. He's giving you access to excess... Uh, explosives so they can be used to make mines or missiles or stuff like that um, and you won't have to do a streetwise it'll just be assumed that all the stuffs on the explosives charts are available within reason um, as long as you're not building enough explosives to make your own crater <laughs> I think that should be fine um, and then um, I guess we have two maps uh, it sounds like you might want to lead one to the tunnels and one on the surface so, cool. Um, we got about 10 minutes left. Um, it sounds like the next adventure might be a big old battle that we'll be play planning for. So let's uh, go ahead and do that. Um, and we'll go ahead and wrap things up here. You guys did really good with the role playing and story. Uh, so I'll, I'll give you guys 15 experience points for that. And hopefully uh, you're getting a more feel for the dynamics of the different groups and, and species and stuff on the planet and, and different characters' personalities. Uh, also, though, there's seven days. Uh, so you guys have about seven days before they're supposed to collect the money. Um, so if you guys, you guys can use this as downtime, and what we usually do for downtime is uh, on Discord, you just let us know. So if you need stuff to be crafted, that kind of limits and makes you have to prioritize what you're going to craft in that time. Uh, we allow up to 12 hours because realistically, you could probably work a 12-hour day and not get exhausted as long as you have eight hours of inter uninterrupted sleep. So we allow you to, you know, you could take up that time and, and do 12-hour shifts um, during that seven-day period if you want to do it on the next if you want to plan to do it before they collect their next payment. Yeah. Uh, so. Sounds good. Does anyone have any questions for me before we wrap things up? Um, how much downtime do I need to, I guess, gather that information I'm trying to pull on the facility? Uh, so I don't know if they have anyone else that can make explosive devices. So it's up to you, but you only got seven days from when they're wanting to do this stuff. So you're not going to have enough time to do, really do both. So you're going to have to kind of figure out what's more important. Yeah, and I got droids that can do work too. That's what I'm saying. But the droids take up your time. They can't do stuff separately. They are you. You got a 12 hour period that you can you can have a single droid assist you with on a roll because any rolls that you make come from your time to avoid people from having an army of droids to build an entire fleet of ships while they're gaming. That's ridiculous. So we're not doing that. If you're, you're going to have to spend your time directing an NPC to do stuff if you want them to assist you in building stuff. So it takes away from the time you have. It doesn't give you extra time. That's like, yeah, that's what I'm saying. So they could use the droids if they need to use it. Well, I'm, I'm doing that to something else. I just kind of see what they need. When you oh, yeah, that's, that's true because yeah. Cam has a... Kick Cam has a droid that can craft, so yeah. So you guys can talk about that. I'm planning a heist. How you wanna, what what you want crafted? I know someone someone mentioned blinds could be built. Uh, there can also be um, bunkers that are built, and bunkers count as a vehicle. So they actually you have to do damage in increments of ten in order to do dan do any damage to a bunker. Uh, so and there's only one way in or out of a bunker. So those are some options, and I know those take some time to build. So you guys can kind of discuss that on Discord um, before we meet next week. And then I think next week we'll have kind of the result of all this planning. Sounds good. Cool. Sounds good. 
Cool. Thanks for somebody, uh, somebody, somebody, cue up the A team music. <laughs> <laughs> Don't have A team music, but but I I do have some uh, action music. Or some uh, Tina Turner from from Beyond Thunderdome. Don't we wanna... don't need another hero. Okay. We don't want to get copyright uh, flagged. <laughs> oh yeah, that's right. <laughs> so well, any we're... any characters' we're names in any we're we're so any, any, any character burn. names in this adventure are purely coincidental, and they are not copying <laughs> off of any existing copyrighted material. It's all a coincidence, just like on Celebrity Deathmatch. <laughs> All right. All right. Very good, guys. Thank you. Thanks for running, Jeff. Thanks, guys. Have a good day. All right. Bye. You're welcome. Bye.